Okay, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording which will be used to ensure an accurate record of proceedings produced in the minutes of the meeting. All comments made in open session will be recorded. All right. So I guess we're having this discussion again about um, the name change. Why would they need to do that? I know we've, we've done street name changes. Why would we need to change the name of the subdivision? Because I think the street's named it. I think the street. I think we've, we, 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 we've changed names of streets before without changing the actual name of the subdivision. Yeah, I think this is a street. And actually, you can have subdivisions with multiple names in there. Yeah, but this is one street, right, in the subdivision? Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's just, the subdivision is just one cul de sac. Um, and he wants to, I guess, it's mostly, you know, change it from Libby's Lane to Lisa's Lane. Um, and basically what Kathy um, has told me, I thought she'd be here, um, is that um, uh, she recommends, you know, so I originally sort of sent out a memo to different departments saying like, if you have any objections to this, let me know. Um, and basically she says, um, she strongly recommends, oh, here she is. Uh, but anyway, yeah, you can go ahead and, and speak. Okay, hi everybody. Hello. I think I've met everybody. Oh, I know the rest of you, sure. Um, yeah, so just real quick, you guys approved, um, see if I get it right, Libby's Lane, and the subdivision got recorded at the registry, and now they're changing it to Lisa's Road or Lisa's something. And so what I'm wondering is, are you going to request, or can you request, that they file some kind of a... I don't know if there's such a thing, but like a confirmatory plan. We have deeds, people file deeds, and if there was a spelling error, they'll file this thing called the confirmatory deed, just correcting it. They could file an 81X plan. I'm sorry? It's called an 81X. Okay. So. And that is a confirmatory <coughs> plan. Oh, that okay. That shows what's. Okay, so there'll be so something. So the same thing. So that would be the same thing, right? Just as long as yeah. something's on file that shows it's the, the new the plan version now. of what you do with the deed. Yep. Okay, so you guys can ask them to do that, or maybe you were already asked <coughs> them to do it. Yeah, do so that. you we call it a confirmatory plan? I didn't know what it was called, but I just wanted to make sure another plan with that name gets filed? It gets filed with, with the registry. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, if that's happening, that's it. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's well, there's a chain of title. Right, exactly, because otherwise all of the yeah, lots are going to be... That's why when I read this, I'm like, oh, God, we have to change our... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Ten years from now, so we research and say, where is it? Yeah. Right, yeah, so the mortgage is on Lisa, Lib but Lib it refers Lane. to a plan called Libby's Lane. Okay, perfect. Right. So there's some mechanism that you guys will yeah. Well, we'll look into it. We'll make the request. Sure. Perfect. Yeah. Right. Hey, that was easy. Yeah. <laughs> that, that just we had hard to get a long word. So I, Matthew, I don't know what Matt was talking about. He said, no, <laughs> so, uh, so Matthew, you can follow up on that for us, please? Yeah, I mean, so I missed the last part of that discussion, but basically, you, I assume you guys want him to follow what Kathy said, and, yeah. and it's just like file a new confirmatory plan or whatever it may be. Yeah, he has the to, term for it. I don't know. So, what, so the just to make sure that, like, that it's clear that there won't be confusion for the next hundred years where people see what these land on their needs and all that stuff. Like, Perfect. Needs so. Thank you very much. If, if he doesn't want to do that, then it can just be living. Just ask him to record an 81X. 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 Okay. Excellent. Just to make sure that it changes from, that it really does become Lisa's Enjoy the rest of your meeting. Thanks, Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, how do you know Thank about you. that? Thanks, yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Just Thank you. 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 It happened with Robert's Road Lane. Yeah. How do we handle that? Same way, right? You said that's an 81X? Yeah. Is that just the new set of drawings then? It would be it. Okay. Um, but you've already filed the original subdivision, so you can't take that out of the Exactly. Register. So you can sort of make a modification yeah. in a sense. Yeah. Uh, an amendment thing to it? And the crucial thing is to file it with the registry to make sure it really right. completely replaces that one or supplements it. I think we're at Yeah, if we can get them in a couple minutes early, that's fine. 
Yeah, yeah, that plan doesn't have to have all the roadway and all that stuff on there. When you look up a house on lease and lane, you'll go to that plan. That plan will refer to all the previous stuff, but you can find it. And you're, uh, you're Edward Klipowski? Right. You guys were here a couple of months ago, right? A few months back, yeah. yeah. I think it was before the summer. Okay, so. yeah. well, we've got a new, uh, a new bag of tricks. <laughs> yeah. All right, so maybe you want to um, refresh our memories a little bit? Sure. Um, for the record, my name is Steve Katowski. I work for Webby Engineering. Um, it's Ed Kaplowski. He's the owner of the property. And uh, we were here a few months ago. I think most of you were here. A few, I think a few new faces that weren't here. I think Rebecca was here. Um, and what we were trying to see if the board would consider before we made an official filing for a subdivision was to allow Ed to... Uh, or see if you would be interested in granting a waiver on your total length of road uh, regulation. Uh, the 2,000 foot Yeah, you guys uh, have, restriction. well you guys actually have a 1,000 1, foot. It used to be 2,000 foot. I think Ed was kind of thinking about this mm -hmm. project. Oh, yeah. Wanna... Yep. So um, now it's 1,000. We, we had uh, proposed a road that was uh, roughly about 1,450, maybe 1,500 linear feet and uh, the board wasn't uh, interested in uh, granting that waiver so one thing we did notice as we were going through the discussion was it seemed like some of the board members were wondering well what's going on with the rest of the land here what do you guys plan on doing and, and at that point we said nothing you know we uh, we're you know looking to develop any further than what we already were proposing but it got us to thinking that you know some of this land that it has back here it's you know it would be um, uh, because it's so close to the town of Duxbury line, there really wasn't that much more um, buildable land. And so we ended pretty much with the wetlands. The wetlands kind of defined the limit of what we were proposing to do. But there is this large piece that he still owns that would be, when we were showing the subdivision, we created this sort of uh, a perimeter that wasn't there. The, the land actually goes all the way around to here mm -hmm. and down to uh, the Park Duxbury Street. town line. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't go all the way down there. There's actually a few pieces that go all the way down to uh, Valley Street and uh, and beyond. Uh, and then Ed's land goes all the way up this way back out to High Street and, and around. So what we were, uh, mo most of the remaining land is in Duxbury, but there's some additional land that's out back in Pembroke. So what we thought about is to see if the town would be interested in, in, in maybe as a negotiation accepting some open space and coming back to you. We did take a couple other things into consideration, which is one of the things that I had said that we could have done uh, to mitigate some of the concerns that the board had as far as to having this dead end was to allow a secondary cul-de-sac. So mm -hmm. we, uh, rather than having the sweeping curve come in here and then ending at one cul-de-sac, we decided to include a secondary cul-de-sac at about 1,200 feet in. So you would come in, if there wasn't a problem with emergency vehicles, they wouldn't have to go all the way to the end of the road, which is where the majority of the houses would be developed. They could come and turn around in here and then go back out. Again, we, we, we're still just with a, a single one-way in. There just isn't any other additional land that Ed owns. Um, so what we were, again, here to propose tonight is to see if the town would be interested again in, allow an extension of that 1,000 foot dead end road uh, in consideration of, of, of some open space. So the area that I've got highlighted here in purple is the land that would be um, available to, uh, in, in, uh, to the town. Uh, it would be donated to the town. It's, uh, it's roughly 55 acres. What's kind of interesting about this piece is that it does straddle onto the town line and on the opposite side of Ed's property are two uh, large parcels, about a 22 acre piece and a 12 and a half acre piece that the town of Duxbury owns as open space. And we've actually spoke to both the, um, we spoke to Rob Clark, uh, Bob Clark from the um, Open Space Committee who made a presentation to them to see if they'd be interested in support of this too. We, we, we let Bob know that the reason we'd be, uh, or Ed would be donating the land to the town would be if the planning board were uh, would allow that extension. Um, we also uh, put in a call to um, uh, Joe Grady, who is the conservation agent, also kind of the Bob Clark of Duxbury, mm -hmm. to see if they'd be interested. This little orange piece here would, would represent an additional piece that Ed would be granting to the town of Duxbury, which would in effect connect these two pieces that Duxbury owned and allow this to be one contiguous piece of open space. So it would be, in effect, it would be almost 100 acres of shared 
open space between the town of Pembroke and the town of Duxbury. The, it, the uh, thing that Duxbury is interested in also is, is in access. So there are, there's a series of cop paths. The land out here is very beautiful. Um, the area that we're developing is probably the least um, developed piece. At one time, this area in here up to where the wetlands was, was in a, uh, different agricultural uses. It, it, way back, it was a duck farm. And then at one time, Ed had uh, tried to, uh, to grow sod there. So it was, um, it was always kind of overgrown. Uh, it was all open. Uh, there wasn't much of a canopy in that area when you kind of went and looked in this box. This was wooded in here. But the remainder of this land that's back here, it's, it's just beautiful. Uh, people do use it. Some of the neighbors do um, trespass on the edge property and use it for their own walking purposes, things like that. They hunt, they ride dirt bikes, they do all kinds of stuff out there already. Mm. But um, what we would be uh, also including with this is if we were to do the subdivision is, is if you look kind of closely in here, there's the last two lots over here, there's an existing car path that bisects through one of them. So at the cul-de-sac, we, we provide some kind of an, well, an easement uh, at the cul-de-sac, which would allow access to residents within the town. Mm -hmm. It wants to try to minimize some of the, um, uh, the access to the Duxbury people, only because he's had problems with them in the past. Um, so we would deed the 20-foot right-of-way to, to the town of Pembroke, but the uh, access would, we, we, he'd deed just this parcel to the town of Duxbury to make it inclusive, but we... He didn't want to uh, allow du Duxbury people to come down the call, and, and for you know obvious reasons, the residents within this Pembroke subdivision probably wouldn't want Duxbury people showing up, parking on their street, and walking through here to get out to the Duxbury land. But it would be, you know, it would be sort of included uh, as, as a as a larger piece. What, where's the um, the access for the, for the Duxbury? They don't have any. Don't have and any. as a matter of fact, Joe Grady's been trying to get access or trying to work with Ed over the years. Ed has uh, given, donated, and sold land to the town of Duxbury. Well, it's been on the opposite side of the street on um, Route uh, uh, 58, uh, 53. It's off the of Summer Street. It's been, I don't know, there was probably 50 acres over there. Uh, some additional land uh, out back there uh, that he's uh, sold and sometimes donated, you know, uh, additional land to the town. So they've been interested in trying to do something back here. They, they actually went and had a survey done of this piece just because they wanted to see where it was. And then this piece is just a tax title piece that, you know, nobody's really surveyed back there, but it, it abuts uh, Ed's piece. And then Ed owns another kind of isolated land back here. Oh, this is Ed's too? Yeah, this is his. It's isolated as far as it, it kind of just is one of these uh, old deeded parcels that when, when he had bought his uh, cranberry property, there were just a number of these old parcels mentioned in a deed that this was one of them, this wasn't one, and you know this one wasn't. You know some some old wood lots that weren't included. So is this lot landlocked? This one is, yeah, yeah. At this point, wow. you know, again, he's not really planning on doing anything with it. There may be some, you know, uh, footpaths and and car paths right. and things like that to get access to it out in the back. But for all intents and purposes, his bog reservoir goes here. He's got another reservoir over here. I think this area is sort of your stockpiling area, kind of area that he works, does some work uh, with his box. Okay. okay. And the orange one, is Dux, does Dux Perry want that? Uh, yeah, Joe Grady said he'd be interested in that, yeah. um, to connect these two pieces. And our folks were interested in the purple? Yeah, we do have a letter here if you want, I can okay. submit it. I think Rachel said she was going to... Um, forward it to you folks, but I said I'd be presenting it anyway, but mm -hmm. it, it essentially says we met with um, Bob Clark at, at, at the office here at the town hall. We gave him a copy of this plan, explained to him what we'd be coming before the planning board in the future to uh, propose, and that, um, you know, they would be interested in accepting the land as part of the open space. And Bob's been out there a bunch of times. He's familiar with it. And again, I think if he were here, he could say, um, you know, it's, it's, it, is a, it is a very nice piece of property as far as for uh, there's already a, a network of uh, walking trails numerous people in the area use it already uh, mostly Pembroke residents that have bought it all up and down Forest Street and Upper Valley. So I'm sorry I was late. It's okay. Um, the length of the roadway? We're, we're back to from from here once we included the the cul-de-sac we're at 1300 and we are 13, uh, 1303 feet before we get to this cul-de-sac and then the additional spur that comes off of it is 379 so we're um, 
uh, I'm sorry, 1,203 and 379. Okay, so a total of about six, almost six. Just under 1,600. It actually comes in off of High Street? Yeah, it, there's a, you can see this little box here. And Ed purchased that home back early 90s. Oh, in the 90s. In the, yeah. Maybe a little um, earlier. You know, to, to, you know, to have access to the land if, if he... So what's the street number of the house? Uh, 385. 385. Is that right across from the church? Uh, no, the church is down, down ah, here. Down there. This is the town line. The okay. church actually goes, yeah. the town line goes through the parking lot. Uh, and you've been running the house? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... So that would that would uh, go away. Yep. Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. That may even be a net improvement. <laughs> and the <laughs> issue the is yes. The uh, oh. limiting the length of the road is for safety, but I think you kind of addressed that pretty well. With the with the extra. Yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. Hold this out. I think so. Yeah, I, I tried to see if I could make it somewhere around a thousand feet, but it was interfering with the wetlands here and then trying to get the amount no, of lots I, mean, I think that's, to get. that's pretty good. With yeah, we're, and just so you know, we're at the same 11 lots that we had originally proposed. Yep. We didn't try to sneak in an extra lot. Okay. Yeah, how how far are you from Forest Street? Um, that's Forest Street right there. That's uh, down here. It's, it's beyond the 400 feet. I know right. that you guys have that right. right. information for the, oh, yeah. for the uh, intersections. intersections. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, I'd say just guessing you're probably closer to 800 feet. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Then. And yeah. I guess you can't get access to here because of wetlands. Basically. Yeah, it, I mean this this is the green line indicates the wetlands. Mm -hmm. We we had this line delineated and was reviewed uh, through the conservation commission. We did an ANRAD, so they've reviewed this section of line because we weren't interested in doing anything in this area either. But this wetlands, these wetlands lines that I have here are just uh, taken off of the GIS okay. maps. Yeah, sure. we, we haven't done a survey of anything like that far. You, you've got a, so you'll be behind the homes on, on High Street, right? There's Correct. There's right. homes there going but, down to the, the Duxbury line. Yeah, but, but there's a large wetlands here. And, and it's a, I mean, those houses are really close to the edge of the street. Yeah. So I don't think you're going to see any of the houses that would get built on the opposite side. So this is this is wetlands in here, too. I, sh I, I didn't actually color this in green here, but this is wetlands here, and it kind of comes in the back. So, a, so they'll have a big buffer between the backyard between them, yeah. and, the, so and the subdivision. The only person is this and this. Where's the house in this um, lot compared to I this don't, house? I, I don't quite know where it is, but it's more to the to the right, right in here. Okay. Yeah, they, all the streets are pretty much lined up along High Street. Yep. You know, they're, they're yep. pretty close to the edge of the road. And, you know, set back from the street line. So the parcel that would be done in would be uh, 55 purple. acres, the purple that he's got here. And when you say it's wetlands, I'm always, you know, that means so many different things. How wet is it? Um, I mean, there's not much standing water out there, but it's definitely, it's, you know, you hit that bottom elevation and it's pretty consistent, you, you know, it's thick. So it's not it's necessarily going to be like big walking trails or anything other no, than well, on the Well, the trail's right there, There's right? already a series. This, this is the main cock path yeah. that goes yeah. through it and keeps going. But within this, there's lots of other, you know, little foot trails that there go. Are. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There are about five parcels in here that are pretty good at elevation for, for doing that. For doing that kind right. of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it really is pretty. When, when you walk through here, you, you, you're essentially walking along a ridge, and you've got, you know, uplands on both sides, and then you're looking down into the wetlands. It's, it's a real, you know, and then somewhere up in here, there's an intersection where you kind of, you know, can go out towards Valley Street, you can kind of go out and then it, it kind of peters out through the swamp here, out behind one of these, actually, I think it, I think it, this might be the intersection that comes through here. Is this, is this the, is it the, the four or five corners there? Yes. Yeah, so it, com it comes here, this one kind of comes down and goes through Valley, and then this one, I think, goes back up behind the sand pit that it's got. I mean, the reality is even when we have parking spots or access like that, not a lot of people use them. We're hoping that, you know, yeah. he's hoping that not a lot of <laughs> word gets out because, like I said, he's had problems with, you know, people living yeah. along his bogs in Duxbury and they think it's, you know, it's open, open space right. for, for anybody and, you know, when he there tries to explain to them that it's private property, they, the, the concept just there escapes are a lot, them. A lot, more, <laughs> a lot more walkers in, in Duxbury yeah. than there are in Pembroke. So even though we thought it'd be a good idea to include this, you know, just again, just to try to combine these, even though technically these are combined, it's just where the where the, the access comes through, mm -hmm. where, where the uh, the uh, 
Right. The car path is, it kind of goes right through that parcel, so we figured it would be a good thing. And it is in the Duxbury side of the town line. This was purchased as, as, as a part of the duck farm that was in Duxbury, uh, Goodrich's duck farm. Maybe you know the name is Clark. Bill Clark, where he was up, mm -hmm. up off of uh, Keene Street, uh, Taylor Street. With a blueberry. Oh, yeah. On now. Yep, yep. And so um, uh, they stopped raising ducks, and so I ended up buying it to keep people out of the cranberry area. I was disturbing me with cranberries, and that's what happened with the, uh, the uh, turf part that I started to, to uh, grow down here. They came in, it was the era of um, the mopeds, and mm -hmm. the kids would take these bikes and just, they saw a piece of your and they'd dig it up, just ready to have it, so get it uh, uh, to, for sale, and they'd take these bikes and just run it. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I just decided to keep it vacant. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, it makes sense to build there, because since it's already been cleared. Yes. Yeah, like I said, I mean, it's grown in, you know, with briars and things like that, mostly, you know, sumac, poison ivy, all the bad stuff that grows up first. But the ma majority of the land, it, you know, that where the houses would sit is um, in that open there, except for, you know, as you kind of make a perimeter along the edge of the wetlands. You know, there's a there's a kind of a, a, a nice drop-off, and then everything from the back side of the drop-off is where they left the mature pines and things like that. So it really does, you know, as far as the developing part of it, I'm not trying to sell it, but it's just the way that it turned out is that it's, it's you know, the front of these houses, the areas have already sort of been already cleared of any vegetation, and then the backyards, they'll have the remaining, you know, larger, mature, more mature pines, and then the open space that's in the backyard. So, that, you know, for one acre lot, it'll give you the appearance of having, you know, a huge, uh, you know, backyard with no plenty of privacy. Any concerns? No, no 11 houses. No, I, I don't see any, have any concerns, but the second uh, cul-de-sac, uh, Steve, I think you allayed most of my fears. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I do think that really helps on a safety perspective. Obviously, it's also a nice addition to the town open space um, to have that with the cart back. Yeah, yeah. So we would have to grant a waiver on the thousand foot. Right, but we can't really <clears throat> grant a waiver until we have the application. No, no, I know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we here to just kind of open that yeah. discussion up. Yeah. The last time we were here, you know, it seemed like we had a few people that were sort of open to maybe, you know, considering something, but it seemed like we had to offer something, you know, in exchange for that, and that's what we've come up with. No, you don't the same so, issue, so, that's so we can, you know, yeah. kind of move forward with, with everybody's, uh, you know, seems to have a, a pretty positive um, feedback, and we can, you know, get ready to file a preliminary plan and, and get that submitted probably, you know, in a month or so. All right, that sounds good. Okay. All right, okay. Good. All right great. great. Thank you. I'm not hearing anything negative. Great, thanks. I have a form A after this, so I'm just going to stick around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks. thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So we're ready. I guess, yeah, if I can get a cop, you can have original or a cop, yeah, yeah. just for, sure. for my records. Sort of yeah. as a, oh, so we can say what was actually discussed tonight. Sure. Or if somebody sees on the agenda and wants to see the draw, I can. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter anyway, yeah. just leave it like that, so. Okay. And then, um, yeah, so I guess we're, we're I, all set. All set, ready yeah. for the nice preliminary nice design. Nice right. yeah. yeah, yeah, thanks for coming in. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you. Thanks. So thank now, thanks do you have another map for us? Uh, we have a Form 8 plan, and uh, actually the, the person who's hopefully buying, going to be buying this, he's out in the hallway, I'll just let him know he wanted to come <coughs> sit uh, yeah. with us tonight. <coughs> Hi. Do we make a little presentation or? Yeah, sure. It's kind of self-explanatory. So this is on Holmes Ave. Uh, a couple of years ago, the owner of the property created these two lots as you come in from uh, school street. 
and then uh, they left enough land to create one additional lot and had the wetlands delineated. There's a little isolated land in here that essentially is where the drainage is. We did speak to Bob Clark on this as well. He's familiar with it. He went out there. He said that this isn't a, uh, an actual wetlands. It's more just a drainage area. What he did ask us to do, and I was actually working on it here at the office today, is to uh, just allow some kind of a compensatory storage area if they do fill this in. Um, we're proposing to put the house over here, kind of come in up with the driveway over here, so leave this a little long, and they're going to dig out a little bit of area just so that the drainage kind of has a place to go. But essentially, it's got you know 206 uh, feet of frontage. It's uh, 0.92 acres, all technically uplands. Whose lane is it coming from? Lot 18 or? No, School Street. School Street uh, 27. 27. Yeah, so this is Silver Lake oh, down yeah. here. Yeah, Silver Lake. This is one of the roads that's on the uh, south side. Of... This lot right now, which which address is it part of? Oh, um, oh I'm sorry. Oh, it's yeah. part of. Uh, this yeah, exactly. This is the remaining. Oh, that's the remaining. Oh, that's right. right. Wasn't yeah. there an issue that we had at some point with lot 18 having to do with some. They granted, and it's it's here. There's yes. a roadway improvement easement with drainage. Right. There was a power right. line easement. There's right. a bunch of things that are on record. I'm not sure what the history of it is, but the but also but they are meeting after meeting talking about coring samples of the road at some point in time too. Yeah, wasn't there something about there was supposed to be something done on the road to improve drainage or something, and it affected the sale of this house? Yes, yeah. and that's what they did was they did. And that was it. Yeah. I okay. thought we added drainage to it. We did. It was this, wasn't it? I think the issue with the road was uh, it was crowned. Not a subdivision road, but the guy that owned it at the time just had the wherewithal to go ahead and pay it. Right, and then we, we went to core it. Then we, yeah, we wanted to see what, see what it was. What, what it's a private way? And then it was, a, it was kind of a yeah, crowned yeah. road, so the drainage was going off on either side. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, so it's, a, it's a private way that, that yeah. the original land court petition goes back to the like the early 1920s. Yeah. I just remember that there was some complicated issue where we had reams of paper in front of us at one point having to do with lot 18. Yeah, that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, we and did. We didn't. <coughs> finally got uh, taken care of with the drainage stuff. I, we I had, just we had drawings for all the drainage and stuff yeah. that was going on. Okay. And that was all supposed to go here. On. Yeah, I didn't know what the easement was. I just saw that it's on the record plan yeah. for, uh, for road improvements. Because I thought there was something about there was only, when, when the subdivision plan was granted, there was only supposed to be so many lots because of the issue of the drainage. And so last time someone asked us about a lot, when they, when they were selling lot 18, I thought we said no. And so lot 17 had to get sold with 18. I think, yeah, I think it was something here, but we, I think we let them have this, the lot 17 during that discussion. I don't know. Yeah, it, I didn't bring it with me, but there, there was a petition plan that was grant, it was signed by the planning board that showed one, two, three lots, and then yes. for some reason, and I don't know what the reason was. We actually Scott and I talked about this. At the land court, they only released those two lots. And the, this, this, the frontage did change a little bit on these lots. This had 200 feet of frontage originally. It got shrunk down to 165, and then the frontage was, was uh, on, uh, yeah. yeah. So the original plan had 206, 206, and then there was a third 206 that came basically up to the edge of the wetlands. And then uh, these are the two lots that were created. I, again, I don't really know. You guys know more of the history than I do what happened, but this lot was never uh, released by the land court, even though there is a petition plan in there that just shows shows a lot, but it's not the same configuration. We, we shrunk it down to 206 uh, foot of frontage, not the 210. I thought when this house got sold, we were asked to release that lot as a separate lot so it could be sold separately, and we had said no because we looked at the history of it at that time, and there was something having to do with the subdivision requirements. Like this yeah, is a modification to... of the subdivision I think a part of it was um, adequacy of the way. Some Is that of, some yeah. do, do we have another file on Home Street that's fairly recent we that do. we could pull right now? Not that I've seen. I can look around, but I... But there's nothing sort of easily accessible? But, but I'm not sure if it's what it's filed on. Because it's not really a subdivision. It's not a subdivision. It, it, it was an yeah, adequacy was of the way. I believe it was an adequacy of the way issue. No, I don't think it was a subdivision. No, because it was there before. It was, yeah, I think it's always been an ancient 
yeah. you know, roadway. I think part of it too was a way. of those that come down, and they were all established at, you know, not 40 feet wide, and they were all 35, and right. you know, two, two rods wide. Right. And they were always kind of, you know, there's, there's a lot of them, I think Prince Street, uh, Latham, you know, there's a few of these that kind of were, you know, in the early 20s and 30s or whatever, they were created to, you know, to create lots up and down. Wasn't well, part of the issue too that it wandered off where the actual right away was? Uh, I know we located the edge. I mean, it's pretty straight. I don't have it shown on the plan, but I know in front of our lot, the the ax, you know, the the, the traveled way is within the limits of the 35 foot right of way. I think that's what had to change. I don't know if anything's changed. I mean, not, not since I've seen it, because every time I go well, down there, it looks like it's just a straight shot. Uh, this is way before that. It's more than a couple of years when we actually first dealt with it. Oh, first yeah. dealt with it, but this came up. How long ago did this house get sold? Uh, 2016, or just a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah so when it got sold a couple years ago, this issue came up because I think there was some talk at the time of creating another lot and selling this house separate from that lot. And I think we said no, I just can't remember why. We have to find out what was originally But you, uh, you changed that. this lot, the lot lines have changed? Uh, well, originally they. Originally, Who owns this lot? Uh, it, the the owner of uh, number thirty nine owns okay. it. But originally, what I was uh, mentioning was that the the frontage on homes was was two ten, two ten, and two ten, mm -hmm. and that was the original. I want to say that was done in ninety seven, ninety eight, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. And then, That's and then they right. and then they came back in two thousand and six, two thousand eight, mm -hmm. and then they reconfigured this lot. Um, that was. Um, Shane McGlone worked for McKenzie Engineering did, did uh -huh. these two lots and then that is the current configuration down at the land court in, in well in Boston Plymouth. but the but the, the, the previous plan it said superseded down at the registry and I didn't know why that was the 98 sounds about what I'm thinking of I believe it was, it was adequacy of the way it was, it was part, part of the issue I know in addition to this just as a side issue is across the street adjacent to this lot they created another lot maybe i don't know if that's something else that you're maybe oh across about. the street there was another lot there's right? a, another and they built a house over there too that last year so i don't yeah, know if that, that was something it. else it was across the street that, that was what bob had said too is that when they built the house and I, again i'm just throwing some thoughts out there is when bob said when they built the house across the street that they filled in the the drainage that was essentially, you know, there was a low spot that was taking in, and so that's why he asked us to make sure that we didn't, you know, if we're going to fill that in, which it's not protected, you know, the right to fill it in, but we allow for some compensatory storage area for the road drainage. Mm -hmm. Right, did, because the road wasn't really built in a way that had drainage type issues. Everything taken is into sort account. of old school. The road is elevated, bermed up in the road, and the water just kind of washes oh. off to the edges. Uh, both wait, sides. Both sides, yeah. And so that's the natural that low spot. That you just brought out, Matthew? No, no, no I, I think, think that's yours. Oh, that's yours, okay. So we didn't find the. I don't see anything. I mean, um, I could look through maybe all the minutes from 2016. That's what I'm trying to search right now, and I'm just not. Um, um, I mean, I started this job, I think, in July of 2016. I don't recall anything well, in the second half of the year uh, while I was here for mm -hmm. this. Is there any catch spaces or anything at that little spot or no. piping or anything like that? No, it's just that they, they, when they paved it, they, you know, just made a, maybe a two foot by, you know, just a little swale to, to collect the water on both sides of the street. So it just naturally flows down. Most of it sheds off to the side, but any that kind of collects in that low spot just rolls off the edge of the pavement into the off, off, you know, off onto the woods. What's the width of the pavement there? My guess is that it's probably just around 20 feet. Um, it's probably not full subdivision width, but it's probably enough for two cars to get by. Yeah. I think we usually go, I think our adequacy of the way is 15 feet. 
Yeah, I'd say more than that. Yeah. <clears throat> I just noticed, Steve, that this lot is less than an acre. Is there a reason? It was that because it was prior. Uh, well, your regulation is forty thousand square feet, okay. not forty-three right. five sixty. Okay. So we just yeah. made it to forty thousand. Okay. Yeah. That's what, when, when they were 210, 210, and 210, that pushed everything down so that I think you right. weren't able to get that circle. And that's my guess. And then when Mackenzie came in, they only created these two lots. I don't know why they didn't create this one at that time. But they were at least kind of clever enough to claim the frontage out here on School Street and right. limit that frontage. So that reduced this by about 35 feet, which probably explains why the original lot didn't work. I don't know when your circle requirement came in, if that was... It's got to be after before '98. So my my what I'm remembering had to do with when this lot was for sale, and there was an issue. Well, they wanted at the, with that. but at the time yeah. they wanted to subdivide it, right? I think they just wanted to subdivide off lot 17, and they said no, and I can't remember why they said no. Well, we, uh, okay. Maybe we didn't. I don't know. I don't remember. Reason we say no. Was there was an existing restriction? Or had to proceed away, or in there. I was trying Drainage. to piece it together to try to figure out because it was one of those things, sort of a mystery to me. Is you know when I looked at the original plan, the petition, the, the, the plan that actually is available uh, that was released from Land Court in '98 showed a completely different configuration. Showed three lots, and that's why I told Scott. I said, Scott, the, the, the lot already exists, you know. And then we went and had the wetlands delineated, and we. I can't remember if, if, if that's when we kind of noticed that that the original lot, the 210, 210, and then there was another 210. And then we we had to send $5 in <laughs> to get the, the petition plan from Boston because they didn't have it on the registry's computer. And, and, and still, they haven't updated them since 2016. But this plan was done in 2016, somewhere around that date. At least it's when it's so when those I, those two lots were done that late. Yeah, yeah, just recently. I think I found it um, from May of 2016. Okay, and what what did the minutes say? Uh, so yeah, the minutes um, May 16th, 2016. Um, uh, informal for lots. Informal for lot number 17, Holmes Avenue, Kirby. Um, uh, we can read it here, but basically. Uh, Mr. Kirby and Mr. Baldwin came before the board to discuss a covenant that was put on lot number 16 with drainage improvements to be made to the roadway on Holmes Avenue dated um, 2011. Mr. Kirby is now selling his house. No improvements have been made since that time. Another plan drawn by McKenzie was signed by the board creating lot 17 and 18. Therefore, 16 does not exist anymore. A portion of 17 is wet and can never be built on. There are no more lots left to be built on. After a lengthy discussion, the board felt the covenant dated 2011 should be removed as it became null and void. Um, well, here's the. Um, so, but was when was what was the date of the drainage improvements? That was back in '98, right? No, I think that, that as far as I know, the easement actually that, that shown on this plan was was created in 2016 on McKenzie's plan. I'm talking so, about before that. Though. Yeah. What he just I, read out I, refers I to something before. See, before. I, think, I think I think the original question was, was that way adequate? No, I no. It wasn't it, an accepted way. The issue had to do with the fact that Mr. Kirby had made a commitment to make drainage improvements to the roadway and homes, and those drainage improvements were never actually made. Ah, that would be it then. So, and, and I think that that improvement showed two catch basins at the low point and. 
in, a, in the associated piping and, and all, and it was never happened. And that was a requirement to bring it, make it adequate. Yeah, or to make it so that the lots could be granted. Yeah. yeah. So in terms of granting a form A, we can only grant it if it's frontage on a, on a way that's. No, you can. It can be a private way, but there's yeah. a question of adequacy. It has to be way, adequate. Right? Yeah. And I think before to make it adequate, we we requested those drainage improvements that never happened. Right. And I think that was the issue. But then. Do we have any reference back to when that was those drainage improvements? I think there was a reference to 2011. We found that there were no more lots left to be built on after 2011. Matt, maybe can you look up Homes of 20, something in 2011? But then it said the board votes to remove the covenant dated January 24th, 2011, with the condition that an easement to the town of Pembroke be written and recorded for 79,879 square feet of wetland area as shown in the McKenzie Engineering Group right plan. Here. Do we have, do you see a 79,000 square foot easement? No, I mean, the only easement that, that I know is, is this one, unless they're including something else here, because the remaining land is 185, so I don't know if that's... Well, so that's what it is. We needed the easement so that we'd have the, a place for the drainage to go. Mm, right, yeah, the only easement, and I, I apologize, I should have brought, I didn't expect this stuff to come up, but. This is the only easement that was on the, the latest land court plan. That's the F plan. That's the latest one. That's is this the easement? Is this piece in here? Yeah, it's just that tiny little sliver along the edge of the, now, the what home's is, app. What is that power that, line? That's a power line easement yeah. to get access to. What was the area? I think it was this house. Yes. So there was a covenant dated January 24th, 2011. So in 2016, we voted to remove that covenant, whatever it is, the January 24th, 2011 covenant, with the condition that an easement to the town be written and recorded, which obviously it hasn't been. Unless, unless so the covenant yeah. dated January 24th, 2011 is still in effect then. So we need to go look and see what that says. So we need to know what that says. Because um, 79,000 square feet of wetland yeah, area. This is maybe it's two acres. Unless that's a misprint, unless that's 7,800 square feet. Huh? That's two acres. <laughs> yeah. 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 Roughly, right? Yes. Yeah. Which, again, I'm not sure if maybe that may be a misprint, and this is 7,800 square feet. I mean, that would be kind of close to, but even that, I don't, I don't think it's even 7,800 square feet. Well, if we had the October 15, uh, 2012 plan. plan, we would be able to, hmm. I, I, I feel like, uh, it's up to you guys, but I feel like I would want to see the history of the 2011 and 2012 for personally voting. Mm -hmm. I'm only one member. Mm -hmm. Need to see what, need to see all the history. Because I thought the idea was that this, that it was going to be something built that never got built. And so the quid pro quo was that mm. we would take off the covenant if we got an easement to the town for wetlands. And it doesn't look like that ever got recorded. Unless, uh, unless there's Where another plan, see, see the, the, the reference plan that I have is, is just of the subdivision plans for the, for the title of the property. There, there could actually be, and I'd have to look at the encumbrance page on the back of the land court to just see. Just land court. Yeah, yeah, they may actually have a plan that's down there that I just, you know, it, it escaped me. It could be something additional well, as opposed well, to. According to this, so you've got an existing roadway easement. Yeah. Plan. That's on the that's, that's on the land court plan and with a land court plan number. Yeah, do you but have the, the McKenzie plan from uh, October 2012? I didn't bring any of this with me tonight, but I know we, we have no, we don't have the 2012 plan. We have the 2016 plan, <coughs> so it is possible that there's another plan down there that just uh, preceded the plan that we got from from the five dollars we sent to Boston. We didn't uh, we didn't pull the back page to see if there were any additional plans. We just the the reference that we got was for you know the entire parcel and uh and when we referenced it it referenced the f plan which is the mckenzie plan the most recent one the land court plan references yes the yeah the, the deed references the, the the deed for the parcel as it's created not including the lot 17 and 18 were the numbers that i was given by land because when you do a new plan 
it gets submitted to land court, you always call them up and then they issue the new number. So these are the numbers that they have. <coughs> and they said, you know, we don't care which one you use, 17 or 18, but those are the, the more recent ones. So it kind of shows me that the plan that was done it was indicating a lot 17. Because right now, the land court says this is lot 16. There is no 17 as far as they're concerned, because I think you guys were probably not uh, releasing it for some reason. Right. And that's what I, I don't that's just remember. Because of the drainage, yeah. And these were to go with the drainage and all that. We can do a little bit more research and see. I mean, I'm I'm definitely curious myself as to if there's another plan that's you know that wasn't a, a subdivision plan, but a plan that was drawn for that purpose. I I would say just knowing and seeing the plans that were done, that if it was, uh, you know, I know I know Shane uh, pretty good. That you know, Shane Brennan that, that probably did that plan. It's just that we went and looked at the reference in the so most this, recent one. So this used to be lot 16 yes. on, on the recent land court. It is currently yes, 16. Yes, so it's currently 16. <coughs> and so we were asked by Kirby to do something similar to this. So we need to find our files. Yeah. From 2016. What? To know what we looked at. The 2012 and 2011 stuff. Yeah. Well, we had, there's a plan that Wood signed in October 15, 2012, that created 17 and 18, which is this, I think. Right. Which is what this is. Was something like that. But we, for whatever reason, we wouldn't release the lots, and I don't remember. And there's, no, there's nothing built up there. No, there's two houses. There's two houses, that's what I thought. Yeah, and, and I think the name of the, the builder, John Baldwin, was the one who built those two houses. So, Stephen, are you, are you saying that some of those records would be in land court and not in the registry of deeds? Right. It's, yeah, they have a funny, well, they have a system that's sort of backlogged for. It seems like decades up there that they we, we create a plan like this we submit it and then it gets sent to land court and then they create certificates of ownership to get you know people buy properties and then the plan sits up there until they actually take our plan and then hand draw it and, or however they draw it nowadays and without then, all the engineering information <laughs> yeah some of it's on there i mean but, but most they require us to hand, hand them in a lot of information so that they can you know if needed present a case before a judge it says that you know where we say that the, the properties are is where it is and so we're required to show you know all of the survey monuments and our map on our plan and then they have an engineering division that you know there's only one guy for the whole state that, that draws these things true. yeah they have a lot of guys that review them but there's one draftsman <laughs> so wow. he, and, and and so there are plans that go back to, i mean they, they called us up on a plan from 2005 or 8 or something like that not too long ago and it's like they expect you to sort of, oh, can you just pull up your file and take a look at this? We have a question. You showed a stone bound, but was it a concrete bound? Or, you know, you know, it's just the system is just really kind of, it, 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 dealing with those guys, I always say that they're the nicest and best people to deal with anywhere in the state if you ever have to deal with anybody. But unfortunately, they're just so backlogged. Backlog. And, and they're very meticulous as far as what they do. They're very, you know, they, they, there's no mistake in any of this work that they do. But um, unfortunately, when they release these deeds, the plans just sit up there. There's no, you can't punch them <coughs> up on a computer and look at them, print them, or anything. And then the process that they have is you submit a request for $5, and then they mail you a copy. And sometimes that takes, it took us like two and a half, three weeks from the time that they get their request and go down somewhere and pull the copy and send it to you. you know, but, what, but if we were acquiring drainage improvements, to the road that plan that wouldn't miss that wouldn't be in land court or the registry of deeds that, that would be in our files yeah unless it was just a seventy nine thousand square foot easement on on a plan which is what i want to i about. remember catch basins and stuff yeah. happening at that low point but in some we removed the covenant dated january 24th 2011 i don't know what that covenant is in return for the easement so was that the government to create the drainage probably and we said forget about requiring you to make the drainage but give us an easement Right. And then we won't worry about it. That sounds like it. But then that well, well, easement was so then if, if the covenant was dated 2011 or something. Can we look up the covenant? Look, when was the covenant? It was 2011. No, 2011. Was 2011. Was 2011. Was 2011. You look up that? 79,000 square feet. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I mean, her files. They just built that two years ago. That way. Yeah. 
Well, how would that have been? It'd, it'd be uh, something to try to I think it's a different parcel. It was on the other side of the street. Yeah, I think a different parcel. I think I mean, if it was a subdivision that was a whole street, at some point I could probably find it. I mean, it might be the minutes were around that time. Yeah, I can look through the minutes. I can look, I can do my own search. So there's other three that were built. It sounds like they released two of them at one time, but they held off on that. I mean, that was always the thing I was mentioning to you, that's sort of a mystery on why that that lot was sort of created, not created, and then changed a little bit. And we always speculated that it just had something to do with the location of the wetlands, because, you know, obviously our wetlands line and Mackenzie's wetland lines were similar as far as where they were. So mm -hmm. we just assumed that they, for whatever reason, they just were selling two lots off. I, I guess I'm feeling like there's a little deja vu in terms of what Kirby was trying to do when he was selling, because I think he did originally want to sell another lot. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I, so I feel like we have to pull the covenant from 2011 and pull the plan from October 2012, and somewhere there should be a file that we were looking at. Yeah, it looks like the. Uh, I'm sorry, truck. It looks like the original subdivision application for Holmes Ave was from back in 2005. I found a legal ad. Oops. Um, when the original lot 17 was created, I think it was in 2005. It says a portion of lot, it says plan drawn by McKenzie dated October 15, 2012, was signed by the board creating lot 17 and 18. Therefore, lot 16 does not exist anymore. That sounds about, that's but lot exists, 16 does account. exist, it was transferred to. <laughs> Well, it doesn't exist as far as you guys were concerned at the time, but, you know, for whatever reason, it wasn't. And then we said a portion of Lot 17 is wet and can never be built on, but apparently that was wrong because it's wet, but it's drainage as opposed to wetlands. Yeah. Um, but if and we needed it for drainage, then that's why you couldn't build on it. So I think the theory was that there was some confusion as to whether he was selling Lot 16 or Lot 17 and 18. He couldn't, there was a covenant dated 2011 that had to do with building out the drainage that was supposed to have been a requirement that never happened. But it was holding up the sale of Lot 16, so I think we released the covenant on the condition that we got wetland area to be written in as an easement to the town. And as shown on the McKenzie Group engineering plan, from October 2012. So we need to see the 2012 plan and see if we can identify the wetland area that was supposed to have been granted as an easement to the town. I understand. The weird thing is, I didn't even vote on it. Yeah, more of Yeah, well. Yeah, that's why I remember all this. But I wasn't there to vote that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was there. And I'll look to see if there are any additional plans that, you know, show a drainage easement on them, because I'd like to see what that looks like as well. Okay, so we'll do a little bit more homework and maybe have to come back in two weeks. That's fine. Yep, I think so. Anybody disagree? I found the whole, or at least a lot of the files for the original one <laughs> from 2005, and Maryland started in 2005 to like 2010. Maybe some of the um, yeah. I think as far as this, for a form A, the board only has, I think, 21 days, or else it's a, sort of constructively approved if the board doesn't render a decision. So maybe the best thing is for him to, 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 to request it be with or, or can we grant an extension? Can, can they grant an extension? I, I'm not sure. I think, you know, it's kind of weird. I was just trying to figure that out actually. There's no application fee for a form A, is there? Well, I know there I know in Plymouth, which is where I'm supposed to be in 15 minutes, but no, no pressure. But um, <laughs> they, they, they have, when you file a form A, they have it's a waiver request. So it's, it's just a... You know, and you can't even submit a Form A plan without su submitting the waiver request of time. 
Oh, really? Yeah, for whatever reason. It's just they're really, like, we don't want to be have yeah, to have a gun up to our heads. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So they, there is, I know it can be done in, you know, in, in Plymouth. All right, could you just send an email to, sure. um, to Matthew? To Matthew to put in writing the fact that you're requesting, requesting an extension of time? Sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not sure if I, I mean, that's fine with me. I'm just saying I don't know if, strictly speaking, by, by, by Andrew Dell. You can to extend it. I mean, I guess if Planet does it, maybe. Well, I don't think it's by statute, maybe, but by, by our rules and regulations or bylaws, right? Yeah, I'm not aware of anything. I mean, it might be in here somewhere, but so I'm not aware of anything. The state as far as form, allows so. us to do that. So our rules and regs. But granting the, uh, the extension may not be. Well, I mean, the other sure. option is state you provide law, and we submit it tomorrow. It's not going to be a bar stuff. Yeah, and if he resubmits it, I suppose the board could waive a new application fee. Yeah, we would waive a new application fee. Yeah. Okay, right, can so we well, take a motion and a vote to waive the reapplication fee if the applicant withdraws and resubmits the application? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So time to do a new application. I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you. You can email it. Yeah, I guess you'll just need to, once we sort of look into this and try to figure it out, just, I guess the application. We can drop Probably it off. It's going to be back in two weeks anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, so we'll, we'll do the new application, application tomorrow, and then we'll be back in two weeks. Okay. So I guess you just need to officially sort of, or just verbally just request that you be allowed to withdraw it or something, and watch the effect of it. Yeah. I think just we just agree that they can withdraw without prejudice, resubmit with no application fee. Mm -hmm. Let um, this poor guy run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, the weather's changing and the vegetation doesn't look quite so plentiful as it did. Why can't we just extend the fence all the way behind? All right. Thanks. If that makes you happy, why not? No, but I mean, couldn't we go further behind? Well, I think it would be. Put out vegetation so that we don't, I mean, because I know the concern was that if we did more vegetation, we would um, have to keep it up or water it or do whatever. It's really enough funds. We do have enough funds, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, why don't we just keep going behind the existing vegetation? Yeah, just go as far as we can. Sure. Go ahead. But we can, can only do it in $25,000 at a time. No. No, $10,000 at a time. So let's do this one now. Okay. So what do we need to do tonight? Why is it on our agenda? <laughs> I guess just to, well, before I forget, actually, if um, this is the building permit for 230 Water Street, I just want to make sure I don't forget about this one. Um, just the, the, you guys need to just sign off on it. <coughs> you probably remember 230 water is where are the rock solid tops. Um, and, you know, I, I think it's possible maybe, unless somebody remembers signing off on the first bullet for this, I wonder if maybe they forgot to give that one to us. I'm not sure. But anyway, this, apparently they've begun construction on like the new building. And this is the building permit for the existing building, just like the renovations for the existing building. Um, and uh, basically, I think it should be okay. The only thing that's a little ambig uh, tricky is, originally they had kind of said that this existing building would be used for their sort of um, sort of countertop or kitchen sort of fabrication. And it seems like now kind of only half of it will be for that, and the other stuff will be sort of further sort of the base of operations for kind of their little remodeling unit that also sort of goes out in the field and stuff and then for some storage. It's going to be retail though or is it going to be? No, it'll just, it won't be retail, it'll just be more like where they store some equipment and stuff I guess for their, I guess they have like a remodeling company called RST Remodeling I think which I guess is part of Rock Solid Tops uh, and it kind of goes out to customers and I guess sort of installs their new granite countertops or whatever the case may be their kitchen and stuff. So it's sort of integral to the to the to the company. It's part of the company. So that's always been part of that existing yeah. business there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's just that that front building they were gonna the old um, 
Taylor. I'm told they were going to use to, I thought, build cabins, actually. And they were gonna no, build. the new building is for that. The no, I, I think thought the, the new, new the building new, is for the granite. I think the new building is for cutting the granite tops. Yeah. 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 And then the yeah. existing building is for the, the sort of cabinet fabrication. Uh, and also maybe for this sort of the base of operations for this remodeling. So can I make operation. a motion that we have the clerk sign the um, building permit for rock solid tops? You may. Do we have a second? Second. Does anybody have any questions before we vote? I thought we signed yes already. Not for Apparently this one. Apparently there was a <coughs> permit for the back building to be built, but there was no permit to remodel the front building. And they've added some additional small amount of use that's integral to the business in the front part, but there's no massive change. Like yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. I mean, it's can I say it? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Me sign. Okay, so on the fence, what do we need to do on the fence? I guess just decide. I mean, I've, I put the, you probably saw, I put the three, I finally got the three bids. It was like pulling teeth. Um, you know, Gene Fomini told me that. Um, so we just need to pick a bid? 15th. 15th. I'll go with 15th. Gene Fomini said that they're all so busy. It's hard. But anyway, yeah, I finally got three bids. And so I assume we're sort of required or. Just to vote on one to, of them? To choose the lowest one, I assume. Um, no, I don't. Or maybe not. I don't know if that's how it works for this sort of thing. Armstrong built the, the original fence. That's what I was going yeah, to ask. He built it's the perfect. original fence. So I, you know, I should think that we would go with them, but and I think if I remember right, Matt, their price was the most uh, cost-effective. Yeah, right? theirs is the lowest. Oh um, my God, it's much lower. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's half. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> well, there's the the one for the East Coast guy actually came and looked at the property. The other guy, I think, just did it hastily or something. So that one's way. Yeah, it looks like it's the same but material for all three. I assume so. I mean, the East Coast one at least is within the vicinity, but the other one. It says, it says all well. said cedar yeah. stockade yeah. fence. Well, Armstrong did the one that's there now, right? Right. Yeah. The recycling center. So it's more site. likely to match. <coughs> that's yeah. true. Yeah, they're familiar, presumably. With this thing. <coughs> the only thing with Armstrong is, strictly speaking, the 30 days have expired, but I assume it won't be an issue. Oh, I mean, goodness. you know, this didn't. And also, there is um, they don't give a they don't give a quote for like the 144 foot length, but um, if we want to just the Armstrong is actually just a quote for. It's a price by section. No, it's just a price for 104 feet. I think actually, it's 13 sections, eight feet long. So I guess it'd be 104 feet. I think. Um. Now, do we ask them for a price also for additional footage? I asked originally. I did, and I wasn't getting anything. So then I asked to give a, a quote for 100 feet and 144 feet. Uh, and that's what I got from East Coast and I think from Premier. Well, can we Armstrong. vote to get started on the project based Please. on accepting the Armstrong bid for 100 feet and then ask I, Armstrong I, to submit to increase to to submit a bid for another per project. section. He's got 13 sections, 8 foot tall. Right. Give me a cost per section. Per section, right. Another 8 foot section. But for now, we can get started with this phase. Right. Please. right? I'd like to get his cost per section before you give him the go ahead. Really? Yeah. Well, cool. yeah, because we don't want to do it after the fact. We want to do it before we say yeah, we're going to do the math. All right. So, will you ask him to give us a cost per section if we want to increase this to 200 feet instead of 100 feet? Yeah, yeah. And um, did you say 200? or? Well, 144, but then I'm saying, what if we keep going? What if we keep going behind no, the we, other? We just need the cost treats. per section. Then if we had 20 sections or one section, we you just know, cost per cost. section, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Sure. <coughs> okay. Is it okay if I tell him that he sort of won the the what this month's public record? I said he won the bid that way. Favorite flavor of the month. I think that way. Be more like depending on his per section cost. He didn't get it yet. So tell him, yeah. assuming that his price per section is, is consistent with consistent this with quote, yeah. Yeah. then yeah. He, he's going to get it, and we will probably have follow-on work for him. Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. So price per section meaning like per eight per foot? Per eight foot section. Per eight foot section. Right. Okay. okay. You, get, you get 13 yeah. sections for what, 40, how much money? 
4,600. 40, 40, I'm sorry, 4,500. I mean, are we talking about potentially like 200 feet or, or I mean? Might be. It, it could be. Could be if we if we um, we've got twenty five thousand. We could be going five hundred feet, right? It should be like three hundred and forty, three hundred fifty dollars a section installed. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So Gene Fomini, or I'm sorry, yeah, Gene. I mean, one thing I would ask you before, also, you know, so Gene, when Gene said he could clear the brush and and uh, put down the mulch, uh, he actually, um, you know, he's willing to do that sort of for free, just the DPW doing it. I think the assumption at the time was like about 100 feet or something, so he might be resistant to like 200 or 300 feet. But we can deal with that later, I guess. But just yeah, let's, yeah, it's going to yeah, be yeah, clear that up later. in the woods anyways. Yeah. I mean, I think the further you go, it gets kind of woodsy, but I guess we'll see. I mean, it's, well, the it's question is whether they can thing. clear a path to install a fence behind the vegetation. Yeah. Or or so I don't want to hold up this project because I'm asking a new question. Yeah, we definitely don't want to do and, it. And it doesn't right. look like anybody else is clearing things. To no, no, that would yeah, be, yeah. Because East Coast be specifically good. says they're counting on the town of Pembroke to clear the boat. Yeah, I don't know I'm strong. So I'm assuming yeah. Premier's mm -hmm. going to require the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, although I do think that if we have money in the budget, the town should be able to charge for its labor cost to clear that as part of the project cost toward so the twenty five thousand. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't want to be giving money back when the town is using our own money to pay labor to yeah, go and right. clear it. It's no, not no free. question. No it's question. not free. Somebody's no. paying for it. Yep. So I'd rather the company pay for it than the DPW to just absorb it. Right. Yeah, I could ask Gene if he um I mean it might just be he might not want the hassle, but if he's willing to actually charge it, well, it'd be nice if we could put 200 to 250 feet of fence in, and then the balance could be used to, to, offset pay, costs. It, to offset, pay costs for the DPW yeah. Yeah. to clear it and mulch it and kind of yeah. make it look pretty. Right. Uh, we just redid an island in my neighborhood, and I think we spent like a thousand bucks mm. just on materials. And, you know, neighbors put in labor, and we did the same. It's not yeah. cheap. No. <laughs> and that was just for like plants and mulch and dirt and stuff. So if the town's going to be mulching and clearing, it's got to be worth a few, you know, five grand probably. So I guess there's no such thing as dirt cheap. No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, green folder, I think, has already been around. Matthew's going to be on vacation on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday of this week to attend a conference. Hopefully, he keeps coming back with good information for us. Um, uh, vacation time, personal time, and sick time for the entire fiscal year accrue at the start of the fiscal year. So, are you trying to tell us that suddenly you show up with a lot more vacation and sick time? Yeah, exactly. It's just because it, looks, it, it looks kicks in weird, July exactly. 1st. Yeah, okay. No one's going to know. Need to approve minutes for October 1st that are in our folder that also got emailed out. Do we have any comments or do we have a motion to approve the minutes for Monday, October 1st? Motion to approve the minutes for October 1st. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? We're good. Uh, future board meeting dates. Um, we had looked at November 5th, November 19th, December 3rd, and December 17th to kind of shift dates in November and December to avoid holidays. But November 19th is the Monday before Thanksgiving. Are people planning to go away, or is that still okay? It's okay by me. It's okay by me. With the what? It, uh, Monday before Thanksgiving. The Monday before. Th no, that should be okay. I'm not sure yet. Okay. All right, so we'll keep those dates. So our next meeting dates will be November 5th, November 19th, December 3rd, and December 17th, which does not follow our normal meeting schedule, but it fits with the holidays and still gets us two meetings a month. Yep, that's great. Okay. Um, Carolyn Murray agreed to come to a future board meeting to discuss possible zoning bylaw amendments. I guess first we need to look at... Um, let me put that off for a second until we get a chance to talk about the um, zoning bylaw issues in a minute. Um, Dominic's way, we haven't heard back from the developer on this in terms of estimate of construction inspections. Is that right? Well, but, but what, what is there to hear back from? 
um, the issue was that we asked for yeah, money, I mean, and he said it's too much. Yeah, and so then I sent an email back saying my board feels that there's nothing to talk about. You know, this is what it is, and I haven't heard back from him. So Great. I don't know if so he has decided to give it up or if he's going to <laughs> eventually, if he's going to try to vote in the secret. But uh, at this point, I just wanted to give you guys Peter's estimate because I forgot to give it to you guys two weeks ago. I'll so just, just give you an update that. This week in my MLS feed, I saw that Dominic's Way um, subdivision lots are on MLS for sale. Just FYI. Wow. So maybe you went a different route. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, oh, now the road is not. Oh, it is built. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not built. No, no, it's not built at all. Yeah. No, nothing's built there. Yeah. He, the, and the MLS it's listing Bryce says that Bryce and Weisman, both. The MLS listing says that a package is available for um, site for um, <coughs> site work and foundation work. Um, so apparently he's trying to get someone else to build the houses. Mm -hmm. That's why. Um, so that may be why we're not hearing back because he's not sure what to do. With and whether they'll actually get built by him after all of that. Um, we did reply to interrogatories on the Oak Street litigation. If anybody wants to see them, Matthew has a copy. Um, we received a site plan application for a new building at 212 Schusset Street for Magical Years Preschool. Um, Matthew's recommending a public hearing on November 19th. The ZBA is having a hearing for variances on November 5th. So I think that schedule makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, construction of new traffic light of intersection of Washington and Pleasant Street starts on October 27th. So people always think we know more about this stuff than we do. <laughs> um, now you actually know it's coming up as a member of the planning board. I didn't realize that the Amanda's got the job. Did they? I did, yeah. So that's where it's Oh, I haven't seen that. Okay. That'll be an interesting series of posts on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you expect it to take? Maybe 10, 10 20 years. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> well, I, I, years, I thought on. I heard uh, about a year, you. but I, I, I'm so not going to four. A year for an intersection? What do you think? Well, I mean, they're going to start for a month, then be shut down for six months for winter time. Yeah. <laughs> so why did they bother to start before the new year? I guess P.A. Landers needs some money. Yeah, maybe something to do with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You don't have a chance. You don't want it. You don't want it. get the mobilization money and then shut down for the winter. Mm. Good. Yep. Good point. Okay. So now you're informed. Great. Uh, fiscal year 19 assessor maps have arrived. There are a set of maps in the planning board office if you want to see them. The fall town meeting is October 23rd. Warrant is on the town's website. Um, do we have, we don't have anything from our board. I, didn't, you know, I, I read through it and I didn't see anything that's really cool. relevant, strongly relevant to us. I mean, of course, there's some interesting things, but. No one's asking for road acceptance. Yeah, I don't no. see anything that's like really, so. yeah. Do you have anything else that kind of hits what? There's nothing going on in the center project? That project? No early money on that? No? Okay, um, just as an FYI, Sealand, with the help of Bob Galvin, has applied to the ZBA for variances for 204 Center Street. Also applied to ZBA for a special permit to alter a non conforming use. Wait a minute, why would there be a special permit in the center protection district? Yeah, that, so that, and that come before us. We're the special permit granting authority. Yeah, so it's I'm not sure if it's even a special permit, but he checked the box for special permit and and then he wrote like to offer non conforming use and so according to the zoning bylaws, as you know, we're or you guys are the special permit granting authority for that zone. But then again the ZBA is, is the authority that that something like allows changes to non conforming uses throughout the town. So it seems a bit of, I can show you the thing if you want. It seems a bit ambiguous to me. I mean, I think the bottom line, I mean, I was kind of debating this with Michelle and Tracy earlier today. I think that I just found out about it today, although I think it was submitted like two weeks ago. I think the bottom line is that 
I think town council should probably look at this and, and guide us because the whole thing seems that like it has a lot of complexity. Well, the center protection is an overlay district, right? I don't know. It's not an overlay. It's just it's just its own zone. And, we, and it's we're the special permit granting authority. But isn't it overlaying on top of residence A, business B, C? No, because mm -hmm. it's, no, because it's delineated 300 feet in, right? Is yeah, it a completely it's a, separate zone. It's yeah. separate. Yeah. I mean, in practice, it kind of functions a bit like an overlay on residential aid, but it's not. It's 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 its own zone. I well, think. my point was, if it's an overlay, then if it's something to do with residential A requirements, then it would probably they'd probably go to the ZBA for that kind of variance. If it's not not something written into uh, center protection. Oh, like, where, where's the minimum lot size for center protection? Is that in written into center protection, or do we re rely on residence A? It might be by reference to. Uh, I think the center sure. protection district refers to residential use being in permit use. Let me have more time. That's yeah. what I mean. That's like, the that's it. It's kind of an overlay. That, yes, all uses allowed in residence A. So, so it's we an overlay. have residence district A. Residence. Um, well, no, like adult use is an overlay district. Medical marijuana is an overlay district. Center protection district is a district in the same way residential commercial district. Yeah, or business. Right. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's its own zone. It's, not it's just right. its own zone. But it does say that all uses permitted, so in under center protection district, use is allowed, number one, all uses permitted in residence district A. So. So if it's something that. Is permitted in residence, but it's not because. But if you're not performing use in center protection, then do you go to the ZBA because it's, you're, you're. Dealing with residence A, or do you come here because it's center protection? But, it, but they're not doing a use that's permitted in residence A. It's a multi. It's a. Um, it's. But it was an existing non-conforming. Is that what you mean? Um, I mean, I think what they want to do now, and what's basically what Sealand, I guess, said to us to, to build the two new buildings with commercial on the first floor and residential on the second floor. So I think the buildings would be as they were previously previously presented, but you know, with a different use inside. With mixed use. And. I don't know if that counts as pre-existing non-conforming. I mean, the whole thing is pretty complex. Well, you could say it's... Uh, well, it's now non-conforming, right? Because we got rid of the mixed use. Yeah, I guess it's the same. Yeah, I guess it's the same. But so, if they kept the same site plan, it, it's that site plan allowed commercial in those buildings, and so the parcel as a whole was allowed to have mixed use under the existing site plan that's still in effect. Which is why they were able to continue and clear that property was because the original site so plan is still in effect. Yes, yeah, so if it's still non-conforming, it's grandfathered in. Is that the commercial use is grandfathered in? Yeah. Whether a change to go to commercial and residential is grandfathered in, I don't think so because that's now changing. Well, we don't allow it now. A grandfathered in site plan to something that's no longer allowed. Mm -hmm. So I think they need a variance rather than a special permit. I don't think we could grant this, even if we wanted to. Because it wouldn't be a it's permitted allowed, change. Yeah. It's not allowed use. It's not allowed anymore. use anymore. Yeah. Right. So we can't issue a new site plan. I'm not even sure we could modify the site plan to that extent. Right. So I think ZBA is probably the right place for them to be to yeah. decide whether they can change the use. Um, but then we're going to have to look at the site plan and see if that changes the site well, plan. Well, it would require an all new site plan. Yeah, if they get the variance. Then they need a new site plan. They need a new site plan that would include the they include the residential that exists there now. Well, well, how would it change the site though? Well, you're going to have different requirements different for use. parking and for right. um, like it's a different use. So if you took a normal building and we allowed the ZBA said now you can use it for mixed use, we would have to do a new site plan for a change in use. Whenever there's a change in use, a substantial yeah. change in use. You're required to get a new well, especially one that requires, especially one that requires a variance. Yeah, and especially like if it's, I mean, it'd be one thing if like you said, okay, we wanted to go to a bookstore, and now we decided it's going to be like a candle store. But this is a fundamental change from from what was previously what commercial office to residential. So that's a pretty fundamental. Both change. floors were permitted yeah. for commercial. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there's both a front the, building. I mean, yeah. there's a whole history there where. Mm -hmm. The original site plan had the, those two buildings yeah, strictly commercial. Yeah, yeah. Well, but part of it was that they were allowed to do a larger amount of residential and commercial mm. from the get-go. Mm. And so then the commercial the never got built. So now we have McGill down the road saying, 
he built the commercial better than you know the ceiling <laughs> did on the other property, <laughs> but now he wants the commercial to be used mostly as residential. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was just I was just sitting here thinking. But to on myself, the other hand, you know, if they get the upper floor to be residential, how long before they come back and say, "Hey, can we take half of the lower yeah, floor yeah, as that residential?" residential. Yeah. <laughs> well, about the, ten minutes. <laughs> Honestly, if it were before me, personally, I'd say this may make sense because second floor commercial is really hard to sell mm -hmm. without an uh, um, elevator. Elevator, yeah. So second floor commercial is really doesn't make a ton of sense. So I'm at the point where I say I'm getting tired of pushing this rock up the hill and <laughs> to make the whole thing residential and be done. Well, except <laughs> I just feel like if you had, if you had first floor <coughs> commercial on two buildings yeah. and you had three commercial buildings in a row on that street yeah, that were actually a whole built. Yeah, dynamic change for the, for the center. It yeah. makes it completely different. Mm -hmm. So if it were before me right now, I'd probably say go ahead and make it commercial downstairs, residential upstairs, if it means we're going to get the buildings built. Yeah. Because I think the only way that strip fundamentally changed and McGill is able to rent his commercial space is if those buildings get built. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that it hasn't rented yet. That's yeah. probably a good spot. Yeah, but is I it? don't know what's being done to market it. You know, yes, like, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or what he's asking. Yeah. What he's asking. Mm -hmm. or, you know, I don't know any but of the isn't details. Beyond it's beyond us, isn't it? It's got to go to CBA for the staff. He's got to get, he's got to get a various. I think the ceiling needs a variance no matter what, and then yeah. he needs to come back to us. So I, I think they're going the right path, but I do think it needs to come back to us for a special permit, Matthew. I mean, a site plan, not a special yeah, permit, yeah, a site plan. Yeah, definitely, yeah, and we should definitely might try to make sure. I mean, I assume that they would know that, but we should definitely make sure that, that it does. And I mean, I'm a little concerned with how if ZBA people are going to be able to fully understand this. I, I mean, I feel like... They should probably get advice from town council, but that's their decision, I guess. So, yeah. I think it would make more sense if we were all, I mean, if, if we could get ZBA and the planning board to be on the same page for this one, but I guess we'll see how it works out. Yeah. Any ideas? Mm -hmm. No. You've lived through this, so this is enough <laughs> to make your blood boil? No, no. I, I just wish we could, if, you know. I think the way you guys are thinking, if you get that commercial in there, it may start to attract some other people in because there's a lot of traffic that goes by there. Right. right. We've got a CVS. We also have got the, um, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the funeral home either. Mm. Right. I mean, it, you could. And once that to... goes in, it may be very attractive to have the commercial going down the block. Yeah, it's just, it just mm -hmm. can't be a straight business. Yeah, it's going to be yeah. like a Starbucks or something. You know, like Apartment Central if we don't. Apartments, apartments. More yeah, apartments. And, and don't forget this piece of property that, that um, just got sold where the funeral home is, it's highly desirable to sell them from a, for a commercial standpoint, not a residential standpoint, okay. at least at, at, from what we hear. But it's easy <coughs> to build and sell com uh, residential. It's harder yes. to build and sell commercial. That's right. Period. Yeah. Especially when you're talking about a town center that's well, emerging and generally and other, fully developed. You know, mm -hmm. people people who specialize in, in um, residential getting into that commercial market is harder for them. Um, I'm assuming it's harder for them because they don't. You know, they're just not in the same circles as the commercial real estate people are. So that may make a difference in the marketability. I don't know. Um, <coughs> okay, and then we have. Um, so the only other thing we have on the agenda tonight is um, to talk about possible changes to the t text and the site plan approval and in the zoning bylaws. And Matthew had sent us um, well, a why document. Don't, why don't we take a look at what um, KP Law comes up with for us? Yeah. Um, and then back to a meeting? Yeah. Other than yeah. rushing it through tonight? All right, so we're going to take these two. Because these seem to be, for the most part, housekeeping yeah. issues. Yeah. yeah, I think, I mean, probably four or five of them are sort of housekeeping, you know, not the kind of things that are probably create much of controversy in the way you never know. And then there are three or four things like, you know, I mean, possibly expanding multifamully or, or other sorts well, of things. Well, the business lot size would be one that would require some more discussion. Exactly, and that's more consequential. Or, you know, um, creating more multifamily or, or whatever. 
So do we want to talk about that tonight, or do we want to just um, um, schedule a meeting with Carolyn in um, November or December and start to tee it up for spring town meeting? Um, yeah, but I think the, I mean, the, the I think these housekeeping things, if, if they would give us some language for town meeting that could be presented as such that aren't really controversial, I mean, time period within which a special permit lapses. Yeah, that's easy. Right. All I, right, so let's look through them real quick and see if we can do this. So site plan appeal confusion, that we just want text and we want to go forward, yeah, right? Yeah, right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Addresses on signs. Um, changing the zoning bylaws or site plans are also options. But you know what? I don't even think we need to go to the bylaws on this. This, this could become part of our site plan rules and regs. A condition for future. For future. It, be, it can become a condition. Yeah. Right? I don't, I don't see why it would, it would be an issue. I mean, addresses should be on the signs. But well, you'd be surprised how many signs don't have addresses. Well, no, I agree. I agree. So the question is, do we want to try to do something more substantial that would require existing signs to be modified? No, I think you want to no, do a no, perspective. No. Okay. So we can do that within our site plan. Yeah. And, and it can be a condition that we require as, yeah. as per the, the fire department where they think it's, it's important. Well, the big problem with signs is I think... We do the signs in center of protection, but then the board of select windows signs. Yes, but if, we, but if we condition it, when they go before the selectmen, it's a condition that the selectmen will see has been required, right? By us? Yeah. Because they have to go to the selectmen for the sign approval, and they'll have to meet the condition. Why, why wouldn't we just change the sign by law because say then, that addresses be, need to be on Because that, that signs. would require compliance by people who are don't have the don't have it now. Right? Yes, well, we could say would. any new signs have to have it, right? Yeah, just go yeah. Can we do that? I mean, that's kind of a big, I mean, we could, I guess. It is sort of a lot of work well, to try I, to I think, No, no, you can have bylaws to say any new signs. I know, but what mm -hmm. I'm getting at is you've got to go, you know, if you're going to go before town meeting with a, yeah. a, something like this, you know, we can require it as a condition and get it done. Without a problem. Without a problem. Yeah. It should and be hard. It's, it's, a, you know, it's, it's a 911 public safety issue from the fire chief here. I mean, that should yeah, be easy. You, you, okay, fine with me. Um, either way, I just think we can get it done quicker if we make it a condition. Mm -hmm. And it comes out. And once it's a condition, then I can communicate with Beckman's office and Boone and Providence and say, you know, just remind you guys it's a condition. So if they see new signs that don't have it, then they'll know to. To, to tell people that was required on your. On your I, I do have some fear that it gets lost in the shuffle if it's not in either the rules and regs or the zoning bylaws, because especially the zoning bylaws or what everyone looks at when they're going to do a new sign. Like when I have a sign guy do a sign for me, he usually looks up the zoning bylaws mm -hmm. and then draws a mark up, mock up that he yeah. presents to the building inspector. He's not going to know what the conditions are. And he's right. Not know You're right. Mm -hmm. All right. We can put sure, it in the zoning bylaws. But only with respect to new signs, right? Yeah. Any. Okay. So we're going to ask ask her to ask for tax for new signs. All right. Um, Twelve month period to avoid conforming with amended bylaw. Um, I think that's pretty much housekeeping. Um, so we just need to follow Mass General Law. Okay, so, so we just need that text. That's an update. Okay. Time period within which a special permit lapses. Um, I, I think we drop that for now. Yeah, we can talk with her about that. She but she, we have a one year. She has some verbiage we can put in our site plans in this email. Um, Chapter 184, the zoning violations eventually qualifies legally non-conforming use. Um, but she doesn't think we have to change anything, so that's, um, she'll take a look. Non-residential frontage restriction. Oh, this is the issue about non-residential um, frontage in 
where it says it can only be frontage on the the roads that are defined the district so it can't be frontage on a residential street i think all we have to do is add the the new roads to the list um so that you know like uh The, the road that Courtney was on? Yeah, uh, uh, both. Corporate Park Drive. Corporate Park mm -hmm. Drive would be included. There's no reason Corporate Park Drive shouldn't be included. I don't know if there's a couple other roads like that. But I don't think we want frontage on residential streets, so I, I don't know that we want to completely get rid of it. I'm not sure that it happens that much. It doesn't. This was a, a very strange. Now, you know what else we had this problem was an old Washington Street at the Bryson Lake Condos. Yeah. yeah. And that kind of came up towards the end because they were getting their frontage from old Washington Street. Right. Instead of. Bryson Way. No, so instead of. Um, oh, maybe they were getting their frontage from Bryson Way instead, instead of, of Route 53. Uh -huh. And so even though the condo project was close enough to Route 53, the frontage was from Old Washington Street and Bryson Way, mm -hmm. one or the other. And so they were trying to say, well, it's still within the district where we're doing the condos because they were only doing the condos close to Route 53. But their frontage didn't come off of Route 53. They had no mm -hmm. access from Route 53. And that yeah. put a wrinkle into things after many public hearings. Oh uh, yeah, that was and after a lot of money had been spent on engineering. And so the question is, in a project I think that's a tougher case. Should that project have been okay? I don't know if everybody remembers or if anybody knew it, but like here's old Washington Street, here's Route fifty three, here's the condos on Route fifty three, and here's Bryson Way. Um yeah. They were talking about doing a new condo development here that you would have access from Old Washington Street onto Bryson Way into the condos. The people on residences on Old Washington Street were furious that it was going to create more, the condos would create more density, more traffic onto Old Washington Street. Now it was very close to Route 53 because it was still within the commercial district of Route 53. It, you know, it wasn't, residential commercial, yeah. It, yeah, it wasn't so far off Route 53 that it was in the residential district. But they're accessing. But they were the accessing road. it from a residential road, mm -hmm. and the way the bylaws written, that's not permitted really. So the question is, should it be? Should it not be? If we got rid of it altogether, they still had a small problem with their project. They had some. Uh, they needed a variance for a, a, a side setback that wasn't going to get granted and that they gave up at that point. But we had opposition to the point where people were accusing us of like grafting things. Well, they weren't saying that, but they were just saying it was a corrupt process. Right. Yeah. And, um, and it was because of the density that was coming out onto a residential street. Yeah, I think that's the purpose of why the Bible was in there. So I think if we added streets like Street, I'm Corporate Park Corporate Drive. Corporate Park Drive. Um, that would be better than getting rid of it all together because because right, it was functional there. It was functional there. I don't know if that was the or right result leave it, or not. Or do we just leave it alone? Well, I think I Corporate think, Park Drive though should be included in the bylaw. Yeah, but is the is it? Do we need to know because that yeah, both corners are not built. What's the point? Well, because at the back of Corporate Park Drive, you still have. Um, Land available at the back there. Behind, right there, behind there. Shaw's and Staples, isn't there? Mm -hmm. I mean, Stop and Shop and Staples, isn't there land at the back of Corporate Park Drive that we're still hoping gets developed? Yeah, there's still open there. A fair Across amount. from that indoor. But with this, no, how's he done it before? Yeah. See, he broke that into lots before. Well, how Park this, Drive is already this, sub, 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 chopped up into lots. Does this affect that? Yeah, and how does that, how does this affect Well, because Brigham. When we went to do the site plan on Brigham and they were carving out the lot that we did for Brigham, 
the issue was that technically Brigham didn't have frontage on Oak Street. It only had frontage on Corporate Park Drive. And to be safe that he didn't get into a situation like he did with Bryson Way, Galvin went and got a variance for frontage on Corporate Park Drive instead of Oak Street because the bylaw wouldn't have allowed Brigham to be built on Corporate Park Drive without a variance. I, I don't think we ever required any of the other buildings all the way down Corporate Park Drive to have variance. Well, I think until Bryson Way came up, no one really focused on this provision, period. Yeah. And then Brigham Women's is like right, it's all, all in the industrial area. There is no rent. Well, actually, Corporate Park Drive isn't a residential street, right? Oak Street is though, isn't it? <coughs> but the way But Oak Street th there is in the industrial <coughs> zone. Yeah, I don't but I don't, think our, I don't think mm -hmm. our language says that it can't be residential. I think what our language says is um just looking to my mouth, guys, that's what I'm talking about. Um non-residential frontage so instead of just saying it can't be on residential streets it says in dis business district a dot 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 frontage required for uses not allowed in the residential district <coughs> shall be provided only along the streets listed as specific way lines in section three the specified way lines are listed as subparagraph headings within paragraphs two, three, and four. And then it goes on, this is where the ambiguity is. It goes on and says the frontage requirement is not met by any frontage the property may have along other streets which are residentially zoned but intersect with the streets listed at specified way lines. See, Corporate Park isn't residentially zoned. Well, but but that no, appears to say it's entirely in the but industrial. Taylor Street is. But but the yes. But the bylaw right. doesn't say. That would be an example. Yes, Taylor Street. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, but this doesn't say it has to be a residential street. The front requirement is not met by any property that are residentially zoned that, but intersect with the street specified as lay way lines. But that's just kind of explanatory. The actual rule is that it Only has to be a frontage yeah. on a specified way line. And Corporate Park Drive, because it's wholly within the district, is not a specified way line. And therefore, Corporate Park Drive doesn't count for frontage. And the other one is the way the rule technically reads. Legally. Right. I think the, when, when they were doing Corporate Park Drive, we always at that time read it as doesn't apply there. But that's why Bob Galvin went and got a variance, because when you read the technical language, yeah. the argument could be made, the legal argument could be made, that it has to be frontage on, on, the, way line, yeah. on the way line. And the way line here would be Oak Street, um, Water Street, Church Street, Elm Street, Oak Street, to a point 400 feet southwest of Winter Street on Oak Street. So that's still on Oak Street. Um, oh wait, no, it should be. I should be looking at B, right? Industrial B. Yeah, it's yeah, changed yeah. too because Winter Street isn't there anymore. No, I think Industrial A would be that one. Anyway, it, there are specifically named streets, and according to the Technical language, it only includes those streets that are named as way lines. So, what you're saying then is any other street requires a variance. Yeah. So, I'm saying why don't we just change the bylaw to say Clipper Park Drive, and if there's any other street that's fully within the district. Yeah. The one street you guys had mentioned last time, other, aside from that one, is um, uh, Riverside Drive, I think. Yeah, or Cross um, Street. Well, Riverside Drive would be one, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah because it's, it's sort of up there behind in Lowe's. industrial. Oh, yeah. Next to Lowe's yeah. and behind Lowe's. Anything else? Riverside Drive, Corporate Park Drive. Those are the only two that I wrote down from that. Uh, uh, across the Cross Corporate Park more. Drive. Pembroke Woods Drive, or I think it's, it, well, we showed it as Winter Street. We abandoned Winter Street. 
It's called the five foot. Is it uh, as it stands right Remember now, the woods? Five or five? They have to apply uh, for the other variance. side where it comes out. No, I forget what it's called. Where the hospital? Well, yeah, the hospital. Yeah. The whole I mean, it seems like such a technical. If we had, I think it would go within the technical things to just modify the bylaw to mm -hmm. include what Corporate is, Park Drive and Riverside. Okay. Put it in there. Old Church Street. Old Church Street. Well, that's across the street, isn't it? Yeah. Is that gone? It goes behind the 99, you know the... Yeah, that would actually it. maybe a way line. Isn't that gone? Oh, you mean because he bought it and it's merged with the right. other property? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, it's still there. <coughs> so the street. Uh, RK owns it. RK right. Centers owns it. It's like Winter Street. That got abandoned, isn't it? Old no, Oak Street. We actually abandoned Winter Street. It's nothing like... But Old Church here. Street is an abandoned way too, isn't yeah. it? Sure. Because it was bought up by RK. They bought it from the town? No, it was, it was never, it was never it owned. It wasn't even being used. Wait, but Old right? Church Street is already included in, as a way line. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So we don't have to worry about it. I mean, it's already there. Um, inclusive of Cross Street. So pieces of Cross, Cross Street, Street right. are included, excluding yep. these lots. Um, I mean, this is the funkiest. Well, we added that when we when we in, uh, when we increased the industrial B zone to hit that cross street, so that the. Um, Why don't we just create zones by like drawing lines on a map <laughs> and accepting those maps? Because it's way too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Am I crazy, or would that be a lot easier for the whole yeah. world? Yeah. Someday, yeah. No, so, the, so the picture, we go with a thousand words. <laughs> I think engineers are a little more precise than attorneys' words. <laughs> well, it's probably the attorneys that have us put it, do it that way. Yeah. Blame <laughs> the attorneys. So, yeah, I think you're right. I think if we added, the, 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 added that to the language, that would take care of it for us. Okay. Or did we just say that that does not apply in the industrial, in the industrial zone? Yeah, that would be even better. Well, it? unless you had a street that. Um, we don't. I mean, we don't yeah, really have any. Cross street. Cross street. Those people are wicked upset if we suddenly started to have that be included as frontage. <laughs> I don't know if it would work out that way or not. Oh, because we've extended the zone down to cross street now. We have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just about. Yeah. yeah. With with certain certain lots included. Yeah. That was when we did the uh, the memory care. Memory right. care. Okay. Okay. Business B lot size. Um, do we want to alter the mm. business B zone minimum lot size? Right now it's eighty thousand square feet, which causes a lot of projects to need so variances. So business. B there. Where's business B on the zoning map? It's um, on either side of 139. 139. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that's the pink, the pink up there? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all, all business B. Yeah, and then it goes up, I guess, on. Right. So it goes over to across to the Marshfield line that includes a Christmas tree shop in that yeah. area there. And it also goes up on north to the Hans I'm sorry, to the Hanover line. Okay. I mean, yep. part of the question I have is if you had a 40,000 square foot requirement and there's houses along there that are on regular residential lots, but they're in that zone, could you have small little businesses yeah. take over those yeah. residences and would yeah. that be they're, good or bad? By the same token. I'm not sure there's that many residences left there. Yeah, there are 139, yeah, on Church Street. Um, and the weird a lot more than you think. Right. And the weird thing yeah. is, the way, I suppose the way the market's going. Well, I guess where Water Street comes up, that yeah, before okay, you get to Water Street, yeah, between, yeah, 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 between Washington Street and Water Street, yeah, between Street and Water Street, yeah. You know, like, but uh, why can't we leave it the way it is and just have them apply for variance? Well, because it discourages development. And do we like discouraging commercial development Not in that really district, any. or no? Okay. Yeah. If they want to develop, I guess the only downside is could suddenly have like a bunch of little businesses mixed in with. Residences, would that be bad? Would we rather live in 80,000? Well, they're already have, there. 
They're already there. Can we rest can we only can we just make restrict the smaller sizes to commercial? Um, it is only commercial in the business fee zone that would require the eighty thousand. The eighty thousand to begin with, okay. Yeah. And actually, I wonder. I mean, this is a separate thing, but just to throw it out there quickly, I mean, I wonder if it actually makes sense to to make single-family residential allowable in the business fee zone again. It's not allowed right now? I believe at the moment it's not allowed in this street. Oh, I know where that could open up the can of arms. Where? Washington Street, right? That's a bunch of business B in there, right? Yeah, leading from um, from Church Street North to the can of arms. Not necessarily a can of arms, but... It would only be from, from Church Street up to uh, the Hanover Line is business fee. So in business fee right and now it says... On Washington Street. Only there's part, also a tiny chunk actually where you... And that's where it becomes there. Columbia Road, right? Yeah, it's both actually Washington and yeah. Columbia. But, and then there's, it has a tiny chunk like near the Sunoco Station as well. There's a tiny chunk of business fee down on Washington. Yeah, right. So right, right, right at the Parker Street intersection. Only currently existing residences are allowed in there, so you can't take a commercial use and convert, convert. it to yeah. residential. You can take a residential so, and convert it to commercial, but not vice versa. So if we looked at the, if we took a, a cursory look at the the current residential lots there, look at looked at what the square footage was, and said, look, you could do it with forty thousand square feet instead of eighty thousand square feet. That be a net plus. For them. I mean, your, your your lot becomes more valuable, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, it is a good thing, I think. Unless and, unless you don't like business development again. I mean, it, it might create some um, opposition at town meeting, I suppose. People who just are afraid of being more development. You know, one of the things I would propose if we bring these to town meeting is the things that are much more administrative. Yeah, I mean, this is one that we could sink our teeth into a bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we could look at what the uses allowed are in, in business B. But it, I think it, I think it requires some some more thinking. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think um, from I was thinking, and you guys may, you know, could feel otherwise, but it might make sense to kind of try to. Do the housekeeping ones and try to get those to the approaching the next springtime meeting you know next year and then sort of keep on thinking about the other ones and then aim for those in the following time meeting. so like the housekeeping ones could sort of be more like an easier process where just do it and probably don't create so much opposition and then the other ones keep the bigger ones kind of a little bit separate because those may create some more discussion or in, intense discussion town meeting keep those as sort of a separate process that goes for for springtime meeting of 2020, uh, which also gives us more time to discuss all the process. Or even fall 2019. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Have we had many yeah. people coming asking, like, have we called, asking for a variance for the situation? For in business B? Yeah. Yes. So and has it been granted? Well, didn't we have one with the uh, rock solid cops? You have something there? Yeah, so yeah, we had to get a variance for that one because um, it didn't have enough. And, and it was granted? Yes, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the thing though, I, I, I think the reason why you would, you would change the bylaws as opposed to saying, well, they can always get a variance is that when it goes to marketing, if you don't have 80,000 square feet, no one's going to market it as a potential commercial use. And, and, it's and when you to have to convince hardship. the guy next door to sell his, a, his property to add to your property, it becomes yeah. another burden yeah. that you've got to kind of... Well, and it's yeah. also just extra work for our ZBA. I mean, I mean, it just sort of takes up their time to sort of repeatedly do these, you know. So there is a fair amount well, of demand. Well, no, that's so there's much also it. the idea that maybe, you know, that our bylaws should be something that applies uniformly rather mm -hmm. than you know, kind of hit or miss on who's on the ZBA at right. that time. Right. Right. Um, that everyone kind of gets treated fairly because we come up with the rule that works for everyone. And if it's restrictive, it's restrictive for everyone. If it's not restrictive, it's not restrictive for everyone. I don't know. I, that's how I 
That's where I think the bylaws. You you like the individualized determination? Is that what you're? Yeah. Yeah. You like it to be more individualized. I don't, I don't like a set of rules and that's it. Well, here's Every case should take two seconds. Well, here, Do you follow the rules here, or don't you? <laughs> well, well, right. So here's the thing, Tom. Is if we're seeing a lot of variances for something, that's telling us something, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people are looking for the variance, then you may want to take a look at the bylaw and say... But if a lot of them are granted... Uh, and a lot of them are granted, it's happening anyway. Yeah. Yeah. What, what I'm looking at <clears throat> is if there's a, a row of houses on uh, 139 and the guy in the middle wants to, to sell, but he doesn't have 80,000 square feet. He's got his a variance. If we give it 40,000, he can get it because he's got a 40,000 square foot lot without a variance. Right. And his neighbors are out of luck. Right. No? Yes? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I know. So that's true. That's my point. You know? so, that's true. And, and the question is, who do, who, who do we think ends up getting caught more, the neighbors or the person who... Well, the neighbors, their, their value goes up too. Well, it depends. You know, do you want to buy a residence in the middle of a bunch of businesses? Well, they already Probably have. Not. But they already have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, at this point, 139 is pretty much yeah. a lot. I mean, <coughs> it's, it's not a country road, road, it's not a country like, road it's, anymore. It's a yeah. mixture of... And it is, it is the kind of thing that would, would I mean, you're going to have people who have residences there who are very happy where they live, and they're not going to be happy with a change. Right. That's going to happen. Um, but I think if we're thinking about it from a planning perspective and thinking about where we think that strip is going to be in 50 years, you know, it, it may take some forethought to say, hey, again, you know, if the 40,000 square foot guy in the middle does something and his two neighbors don't like it, well, there's some incentive for them to maybe, or as time goes on, you know, do something. things change, you know, yes. over the years. But now there's a lot of businesses on that strip, and people are living a residence next to a business yeah, already. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. All right, so we're going to think about that a little bit more before we yeah, turn yeah, it would require some thinking because you know maybe the timing wouldn't be right. Maybe Tom is right. People wouldn't want that right now, but it, it's something that we could think about. Okay, and then on the scenic road, Carolyn Murray is suggesting that we add this as a question of applications. I guess I don't understand why we wouldn't mention it in the subdivision of the site plan rules and regs. Well, I, I don't we have to, should we say where a stomach rolls at? Shouldn't we announce that? I mean, so she's saying, saying that we just well, put but, the list of scenic roads on the web page. Let me just ask one site. clarification. The scenic, the scenic um, way is a town bylaw, not a zoning bylaw, correct? I believe that's correct. Yeah, it's, well... <laughs> Yeah, I think so. I think it's, it's, town no, I think it's not there. even a town bylaw. It's and this is part of what makes it so hard. I don't believe it's even listed in the town bylaws. It's just it's it's a it's a state law. And when a town decides to to uh, to specify that certain roads are scenic roads, then the state bylaw there the state law then then applies. And the only way to know what your scenic roads are, well, is to you know ask Matthew for the list. But otherwise, is to look in the old. I had to do this to look like in the old records of the old annual town meetings to see, okay, in 1978, they, they decided that this was a scenic road in ah, 1982. Yeah, okay. So but, it's but why, crazy. why should we have a list of scenic roads? Well, we do. But it should be very clear on yeah, the application. Right. It definitely should be like... It should be submitted with the right. application so, all dealt with in one meeting. So right. she's saying just put a question on the application that says, is there a scenic road adjacent to the project? And then make the list of the scenic roads more easily available. I agree. That's okay, simple. everybody's yeah. okay with that. So let's do that. Um, I would I would think that we would make everybody's life easier too. Then, if if you have the information already gathered, you say like Taylor Street, and then in parentheses adopted in the town meeting year so that if somebody wants to challenge us and look it up they can go do it uh yeah i think i've got that information if we have it if not i wouldn't create it yeah, <coughs> yeah i'll take a look um all right difference between zoning map and bylaws text um the, so there are some people who have a problem and 
we're not the right place to go for the solution. Who is the solution? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't want to deal with it. No. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, that's that's according a, to Carolyn. That's what Charlie Murray said it up in a can of worms. Yeah. yeah Carolyn agrees that trying to do so would be difficult and time consuming and might stir up a lot of controversy. The current so, situation seems to be working. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the question is, I will say um, the zoning maps have other issues. So well, maybe, what the, governs the map maybe the, the assessor uh, should put some money law. into this. By law. What's that? Maybe the assessor should put some yeah. money into this. Yeah, there you go. Straighten them up. They have easier access to money than we do. They do. It's, this is their issue more than their source. They can have it into the issue. Mm. I just think that if the assessors go in and say we need money for engineering to review the assessor's maps in relation to the zoning maps, people would say okay. If the planning board went in and asked for money to get engineering to better define the, the zoning maps, people would say that's a waste of money. If they see it as tied to dollars and assessments, yep. they'll pay for it. If they see it as tied to planning, they won't pay for it. Yep. There you go. You're right. I'm good. We don't have that much talk. <laughs> <coughs> well, we do, but we don't. So, should our zoning bylaws ban use variances? Mm, that's another controversial one. Mm -hmm. I kind of think they should, but Carolyn Murray discourages it. Other departments at Town Hall, they strongly oppose such a change. I think that's probably true. Uh, yeah. That's I mean, that's more my comment, uh, but I think. Well, so we get into this issue, like, if right now they're able to go for a zoning variance on... Residential versus the commercial. At, at the center of street, right? Yeah. Well, it takes a little bit of the burden off of us. Who, I mean, we have to say no. Right. Because we're bound by our bylaws. Right. right, but when it comes to use restrictions as opposed to other restrictions, would the better course to be if we need to redefine the use restrictions, it has to go through town meeting. Right. As opposed to a variance at the CBA. Right. Because you're talking about something that's so um, um, what am I trying to say? So critical, so so fundamental to design bylaws. Like you don't just willy nilly give someone a variance and do spot zoning. You and use really kind of lends itself to spot zoning. Lends its, itself to that, you're right. And really that's what the core of zoning is, is what use you can have in certain areas. True. Yeah, we talk about sizes and frontage and all this other good stuff. True. But it's really what, what uses are going where. Right. And right. Should be, and if you if you're gonna be fair to everyone you kinda of have to say what uses can be where and it can't be changed. And if it's going to be changed, you go through... Then you have to go through the process. The it's process of changing it. At town meeting. At town meeting. But there is, I mean, on the other hand, I mean, I agree with all that, but also there is a benefit to kind of having that ability to give a use experience because, you know, sometimes something may come up that just seems like it's so much in the town's best interest is so desirable and, you know, you really want to have that flexibility. It may only happen once every five years or 20, but... Really don't have that flexibility to be able to. Well, but use variances get granted much more frequently than that. Well, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but let me give an example of what, of what Matt's talking about. Billboard. For instance, the um, and we talked it around forever to how to add the language to the um, to the bylaw, but um, allowing the use of uh, for um, assisted living, right, in the center protection district, allowing that use. Um, we tried to do it in a part of the residential commercial district that was bound by some pretty well-defined areas and that went down uh, because there were some pieces of uh, land there that would lend themselves, big, big enough pieces of land there in the residential commercial zone that would lend itself very well to that use. The use is not allowed there today. Well, but on the other hand, if the meeting voted down some of those assisted living regulations, would it have been a better outcome 
that the ZBA had just granted a variance for those uses? Um, or is and that they, the right result? That town yeah. meeting gets to say, no, we don't want those uses there. Right, because certain people who live near them don't like it and can convince other people that it's not a, a good thing for the town. And is that more likely to happen at a ZBA meeting or at a town meeting? Well, the big difference, I guess, is I think at a, at a town meeting. Well, I don't know. The ZBA sure. meeting, it's only the voters get to, right. get yeah. to and you know, vote. Meeting, right. Town to meeting, vote. everyone gets to okay. vote. Right. right. That's so a huge it, difference to me. Right. True. At town meeting, maybe the whole town says, I would love to have an assistant living in town True. for my right. mother-in-law. But only the voters would be able to say no to it at the, yeah. at the ZBA. Well, the only people who are going to even know about it. Let's right. face yeah. it. Even though things are publicized. If you don't get a letter in the mail as an abutter, you're not showing up at the ZBA here. Right, yeah. Or I'm not. Oh, I guess every now and then it shows up on Facebook. To the well, it's in the paper every week. So, but in that sense, then, if it was something like a an assisted living facility, it's going to be fairly big, so it was something that would have to go to town meeting to allow it. Right. You'd have to be. You'd have to change the zoning. Right. Or allow meeting. for it in certain zones. Allow for it in certain zones. Which would. And be, then everyone would know about but it. But everybody would know about it. That's a lot of work for a developer, though. So that's so that's that's banning a that's banning a use variance, right? Mm -hmm. That's the reason to ban a use variance. Yes. One we need to think about more. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're not going to put that on the list of things to ask for. No. Yeah, or nay, right now. This is another one we we need to sink our teeth into. Okay. Multi-family mixture use and or assisted that's, living. That's the same. Same. Yeah. Accessory dwelling unit. It, except for those two. Those two, I think we need to spend some more time with also as part of, they may become a part of the inclusionary zoning yeah. that we want to look at. She, she actually mentions 40B under both of those. Exactly. Yeah. And we've got this housing plan to, right now. And as part of that housing plan, we were asked to look at inclusionary zoning. So how do we want to look at that? Do well, we want you know, her to talk to us about it? Do we want someone else well, to come I, in and yeah, talk to I, us about it? Probably, but I, I, I go back to something you said a few weeks ago about Birch Street. And then if most people went through Birch Street, they'd be okay with it. And I went, went through and walked through Birch Street. And if every 40B we got into town looked like Birch Street, I'd be like, this is great. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. No, no issues at all. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I was saying that. But I, I would know, hate to see a Pembroke Woods picked up and dropped <laughs> onto the property at Burke Street. Well, 140 <laughs> apartments, right? Yes. <laughs> well, Burke Street is more like cluster zoning. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's it's the way you might design a cluster zone, mm -hmm. but we don't have a cluster zoning bylaw. But as part which of is a whole but as part case. but as part of an inclusionary zoning bylaw, we may look at that cluster zoning concept, yep. along with multifamily mixed use, along with accessory dwelling units, because it seems to me that if we would allow some of this type of development in town, we wouldn't see the 40Bs coming in as much, right? Well, yeah. well our numbers are cool. And our numbers, yeah. But, but, or, or, we'd, or we'd be able to attract 40Bs that we would rather have. Yeah. Right. Well, I like the inclusionary requirement of you know having to have an affordable unit for every so many units. Right. So that then. And that and that it may it wouldn't even require 40B. They may be able to do it within within our, with our existing zoning, so we'd have more control over the subdivision well, plans we don't, and. We don't have a lot of multifamily areas left, do we? No. That's I mean, why we need to look at it. There may no, be some how areas. How do this? Do we need to talk to some developers and say? You know, what do you need, where do you need us to like loosen the reins a bit to get you to come into town and build what we want? Or what meets our requirements for 10% goals and all that? I know the market. Um, I guess we need to know the market then to try and... Well, um, South Shore Chamber of Commerce is doing a big push on this because the state's doing a big push on this, because mm -hmm. the lack of housing, they see as a, as a, a mm -hmm. big deterrent, a big limitation to economic development. 
So yeah. in Hanson right now, I'm seeing that they're, as part of their development of a housing production plan, mm -hmm. if we got ours in quickly for a lot of different reasons, but in Hanson, as part of their housing development plan, they're actually going through and holding public hearings, <coughs> public discussions with, um, uh, I can print some of that out, but they're holding public discussions about what do people think <coughs> is needed. What do the townspeople think is needed? What are people having a hard time finding? Is it, you know, houses or condos to downsize into? Is it um, places for their kids to live? Like, what, yeah. what do people think Where's is needed? Where's the demand? Where's the right. demand? And so they're actually, and, and not only that, but organically, what do the people who already live here want to see? Um, yep. That's what that, the developers want to build. You know, dwelling units that look like we already have in town. Yeah. You mean like a, nine, a 900 square foot ranch or, or all the cottages? Or all the cottages <laughs> we have around the ponds and you know, we have a lot of cottages. Yeah, although it would be better if some of them weren't around the ponds because they're so tiny lots. Right. Well, but if we did that in other parts of town, it might actually. Well, we had some clutter zone. I mean, cluster. cluster zone. So clutter zone. <laughs> <laughs> It's like it's kind of what it is Freudian actually over there. Freudian slip. <laughs> Just as a quick comment, Matthew and I went on a little walk yesterday. Where? Dark Eye Bushes. Oh, I couldn't go to that. I had a conflict. Okay. And How was it? It is the most beautiful piece of property in this town. Is it really? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's very nice. I think yeah. it's great. But within that, there is an eight-unit apartment complex. For the elderly. Now, is that part of our 40B map? No. I don't think it's income restricted, is it? No, it's not. You'd have to convert it to income restricted. Well, to I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, it's, the, the units are $1,600 a month. Oh, so but they they're work. beautiful. I mean, they're really nice. I was surprised at how nice they were. Yeah, and I guess you got it in by by making it a non-profit. I'm, yeah. the whole, I'm, I'm, I'm a little unclear about the whole legality of, of the whole thing, but but any rate, it exists. Uh, so <laughs> what was the purpose of that sidewalk? Because he wants, he wants to uh, sell. I guess to sell the property to, sell to the town. A, a, a portion of the property to the town for a nature preserve. Oh. OK. And I asked Dan Trabuca what the purpose was, and I never got a response. What? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know why either. That's, uh, Doc's not giving it away, let me tell you. But the guy who built that was, it was an unbelievable project. I couldn't get over it. There's a dam down there, there's ponds, uh, oh, yeah. there's a greenhouse. It's unbelievable. Um. Yes, Clark. So we're going to take a look at that. Well, yeah, I think the um, couple of them are there would require a little bit more time and, and thought. Yes, yeah, so we wait and see what the rules from Benson are and the what? what the results yeah, yeah. from oh, Benson are. Well, well, no, my question, I think their results may be different from ours because their town yes. makeup yeah. and expectations might be a little different than But people. it gives a good idea. But what if we should have our own public hearing? Public hearing. Yeah, and maybe the folks from um, the housing alliance. Yeah, would be willing to come down and work with us on doing a public hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just to get some feedback. <clears throat> what call me? Um, no, or the department of uh, the folks who came in from the, the, the two girls that came in. Oh yeah, what we'll call me? Yeah, yeah. I know. The name. One of the girls, and what's the conservation and age of the already created templates oh, yeah. like state yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think before yeah. they started all of this no. discussion. So I'll try to see, I'll do some, um, so I need to do this, I need to get to this. Um, we could, could hold a series of public hearings to kind of gather information and input that would help us and, you know, help inform us on the, on the drafting of some of a inclusionary zoning bylaw mm -hmm. and then um, we're going to have a we're going to need to have a public hearing before we put it before town meeting anyway so we'd be able to gather some input from the community in a series maybe of two or three um, public hearings and then draft something and then we have to have a public hearing when we, when we do that anyway mm -hmm. 
but at least we would, you know, a good thing is always to be able to say that we've sat down and we've gotten some input from people. So when you do present something, you can say we took some of the input, you know. Do we want to try and, what we did before when we did the last master plan, remember we sent that survey out and everyone was like, yeah, you're going to get 50 responses and we want to get like 3,000 responses. Well, there is. Did the town just done. do a survey? It, they just did, they did one. But I, I mean to deal with this. Uh, this 40B this, issue and ask all those questions. There's 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 a piece of it that may help us inform a new survey if we wanted to go deeper with the survey. But I know there was some housing. A lot of it. A, a Can we get the results of the housings, the housing questions in the recent town survey? And that was done. Um, um, I can ask. I guess. Yeah. Let's. Uh, can you ask Sabrina about that? The um, the issue with surveys that you have to be careful about, and that survey in particular is it was available to anyone who wanted to take it. Yeah. It really wasn't done. We mailed it out. No, it was also done where you could uh, you could pick them up at the library and you could fill them out. I don't think it was 100% mailed, was it? No, I don't think so. I thought so, Well, in that case, maybe different. Yeah. Um, you have to be very careful about how you ask the questions because yeah. you don't want to ask the questions to kind of guide the answers you want to get, which which... You need someone who knows how to put a survey together. Yeah. The, the other piece is that Hanson did hire a consultant, so they actually spent some money on this piece where they had someone interviewing realtors and... and well, we may want to do that, too. Know. We may want to do that, too. Mm -hmm. And we may want to ask for 50000 or 100000 to do something like this. Uh, what I'm thinking is maybe we have a public hearing in January, February, Kind of get the ball rolling. Maybe at Springtown meeting, we ask for some money to hold some more public yeah. hearings and sort of shape the process a little better. Yeah. And then by fall of 2019 or spring of 2020, yeah. we'd be ready to come up with a real plan. Yeah. And then we can also tell the state that we're actually working towards our inclusionary zoning. We didn't just pass a housing well, production plan with no follow up. Yeah, well, fall of 19 would be the best time to ask for the money. Actually, yeah, because that's when there's free cash left. Right? Exactly. Hopefully, there will be. There always is. There always is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So we're going to um, work to bring that forward, and I think we could have a motion to adjourn. So moved. You got it. Second. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, wow. Um. <coughs> I didn't get home before my bedtime. Well, I already stayed up late last night.